The board rules are as follows. Please silence all cell phones. If you wish to speak, please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium, adjust the microphone, and then state your name and address for the record. You are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual. Both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak. This typically runs between three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial. Conduct is formal and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. Very good. Madam Secretary, do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, Chairman, with six members present, we do, uh, and Mr. Lister is on his way. He's here. Oh, ha ha, he's here. <laughs> do we have proof of publication and notification of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, it was published on September 1st, 2022, in the Escambia County Sun Press. Thank you. Entertain a motion to approval of the minutes of August the 3rd. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the minutes are approved for no August the 3rd. At this point in the agenda, we have a public forum, which is an opportunity for the public to appear before the board on any subject that is not on the agenda. Chairman, we have two speaker request forms. The first is Sandra Gray. I wasn't planning on doing this. Um, this is about Outback Restoration. They um, are on the agenda. But I just want you to know, my house is only a 1,400 square foot house. They have charged us 47,000 that I saw. Um, the house, when they came, had a blue tarp on top of it, and it also had uh, a hole in the side of the roof because the roof had not been put back on. It took a year to get the roof back on, and I think they came in like February or March. I don't know. I wasn't. Like I said, um, they did, I do not know what they did. The, it's gonna have to have no mediation. We never got any invoices. They put a lien in July on my house for 37,000, I think. I don't have my, but I contested that. And that was July of last year. So that's been contested also. But I just wanted y'all to know that $47,000 and we're going to have to have it redone again when there was a blue tarp on the house and a hole on the side of the building. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? 
Lori Jones. Lori Jones, 409 Bremen Avenue, Pensacola, Florida, 32507. A man had been losing his hearing for some time, but he was too proud to admit his debility and continued to pretend that nothing was wrong with him. One day, a friend bumped into him outside his home and told him that the old man next door had taken ill and it would be kind to pay him a visit as he had no relatives to drop in on him. The nearly deaf man somehow made out what his friend was telling him and promised to visit the neighbor the next day. How was he going to approach his sick neighbor, wondered the deaf man, especially now that he couldn't even hear and could only speak in a whisper, but there was no way out of it, and I'm paraphrasing. This is roomy, y'all. He decided he'd try to decipher what that person was saying, and he'd just answer them, okay? So he's just going to... So, he gets to the old man's house, and he asks the old man, How are you feeling, dear neighbor? And the old man says, I'm dying. And he said, Thank God. Because he'd already figured out the man was going to say, Well, I'm feeling all right. Y'all feeling all right? Okay. So then he says, So what'd you eat last night? Because, you know, simple questions. Simple questions. Simple questions. And the man says, Poison. And he said, Bon appetit. And the sick man, y'all were supposed to laugh. The sick man, even more upset by the last comment, bit his lips to stop himself from swearing at his annoyance with the visitor. And he asked him next, what doctor is treating you? And he said, Azrael, the angel of death. And he said, may he be blessed. His presence is always good news. Whomever he visits is cured of all his pains and aches forever. Unaware of the damage that he had done, unaware of the damage that he had done to his sick neighbor's state of mind, the deaf man took his hand and shook it firmly before taking his leave, believing that he had done his neighborly duty and brought the sick man much joy and relief. I have two suggestions. One, please listen. Stop calling us victims. We're not victims. We are victors. You all were the victims. You sat there and you listened and you did nothing. Okay? And I'm not up today. I'm waiting for my turn. But in solidarity, if you see these signs, we have names. I'm a bank's victor, not a bank's victim. And oh, the second thing, y'all need to turn y'all's mics off when you ain't got nobody out here that needs to hear what you're saying. Because some of those remarks, they could be taken against you. Thank you. Any, anyone else? No, sir. Okay, we'll move into the board secretary status report. Yes, sir, Chair. My, we have some items under board secretary status report. However, we need to add on an application under contractor applications. Uh, the application is Stephen Ritz. It's a reinstatement for delinquent license in excess of three years. He came in just after the agenda was published. And so it is staff's request that we add this application on. Entertain a motion to approve the addition. Motion approved. Second. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Uh, the it, application is added. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. So we're going to move into item 6-1, the resignation of board member Rebecca Fiorello. I'm going to bring up her letter. Ms. Fiorello had some concerns about how this would be perceived, but if you remember from last meeting, she was not present. She had a family emergency with her family in Jacksonville and subsequently has had to move to Jacksonville to take care of that family emergency. It has nothing to do with the current situation with the board. Entertain a motion to approve her application? No, <laughs> that's just informative, okay. sir. Yeah, she was a, a great member of the board and we will miss her greatly. Yes, sir. 
So item two, CCB special session, September 21st. We are requesting a change in date to September 20th. After this room was booked, another meeting got secondarily booked into the room. And um, we have the ability to change our meeting to the 20th if approved. Entertain a motion to approve the change. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Uh, what time would the meeting be? Same time? It will always be at 9 a.m. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move the change to the 20th of September is approved. Um, item three, it's a request for additional special sessions from the board. There's a typo. It should be September 27th, 2022 on the agenda and October 11th, 2022. Motion, motion. motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion made second. Any discussion? September the 27th. Yes, sir. October the 11th. Yes, sir. And we yeah, will have our normal both. meeting on October 5th. So what you're going to see is not next week, but the following week, we'll be having weekly meetings. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. The motion is approved for meetings on September the 27th and October the 11th. Yeah, the agenda says the 26th, however, it should read the 27th. So there it's going to be September made. 27th there and October 11th. Made. Good. I'm now going to turn it over to Christy Hankins, Assistant County Attorney, for a presentation on voting conflicts. Okay. Um, I'm going to handle this from here. Uh, okay. Chairperson, um, and I apologize, it's not going to be as fun as the, uh, as the Sunshine Law presentation. <laughs> um, I worked more on the board meeting itself than I did on, a, on voting conflicts presentations, and it's a pretty straightforward, they're pretty straightforward statutes. They're within your packets. You've got in front of you two statutes, Florida Statute 286.012 and Florida Statute 112.3143. These, um, are, we're going to look at the voting conflicts under 3143, just so that you're aware, it applies to all public officers, which means any person elected or appointed to hold office in, in, in an agency, um, and it includes any person that's serving on an advisory board. That's why we felt this was important to get this in front of you. <clears throat> and of course, it applies differently if you're dealing with elected officers versus appointed officers. Um, it doesn't apply to all votes that results in gain or loss to the voting officer. It, it requires that the gain or loss be special. And the statute itself defines special private gain or loss. Basically, it means there must be an economic benefit or harm. And that benefit or harm could be inure to the voting officer themselves, or it could affect the officer's principals, relatives, or business associates. In the state statutes, there are three different, different definitions of what a relative is. <laughs> so there's one specific to this statute, and if you look at that, it means any father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, brother, sister, father-in-law, mother-in-law, son-in-law, or daughter-in-law. So it's very specific as what applies to these voting conflicts. Um, so I'm glad we printed out a copy because when you get into other areas, I'm not going to go into all the into ethics today. I'm going to stick to voting conflicts because when you get into ethics, there's a new definition. Um, just like uh, also in nepotism, there's another definition of what's considered um, a relative. So, just to keep it a little less confusing, we're going to focus on voting conflicts. Um, so, when do you have a voting conflict? If you're an elected or appointed state officer, you may not vote on any measure when you are aware at the time of the vote that it will inure to your special private gain or loss. Um, and there are two ways in which you may have a voting conflict. 
One is when it, go, when it will inure to your special private gain or loss, regardless of whether or not you realize it would have that effect. Um, and then the other area is when it will bring special private gain or loss to a principal, a parent organization or a subsidiary, a relative or a business associate. And those are also listed under um, the special gain or loss definition in case you want to look at it a little closer. So keeping that in mind, when you are an appointed officer with a voting conflict under that statute, you must abstain from the vote and file a Form 8A within 15 days of the vote. I'm holding up a copy of that for you. Um, if you don't have, if you need a copy of this, let us know, and I think the Secretary has copies of it, but I just want to make sure you are aware of this form. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't participate in the discussion about the vote. But if you're going to participate in the discussion before the vote, you have to first disclose that you have a conflict. So the three things you must do is abstain from the vote, disclose that you have a conflict prior to the vote, and file this form within 15 days of the vote. I'm going to switch it. We're going to go back to, or we're going to look at statute number 286. 012. Under 286.012, there's a voting requirement of meetings of governmental bodies. And under this voting requirement, the language is very clear. A member of the state, county, or municipal government, board, commission, or agency, is, um, where, at which an official decision, ruling, or other official act is to be taken or adopted, may not abstain from voting in regard to any such decision, ruling, or act and a vote shall be recorded or, or counted for each member present, unless with respect to any such member. And then it goes in to possible conflicts of interest. This portion of the statute still requires that there be a form, um, 8B, I'm sorry, a form filled out for that. The second area of the statute at the very bottom, and this, um, this is after some conversations, making sure that we're on board um, with the Ethics Commission, there's a discussion at the very end that says that if the official decision, ruling, or act occurs in the context of a quasi-judicial proceeding, a member may abstain from voting on such matter if the abstention is to assure a, fa to assure a fair proceeding free from <laughs> potential bias or prejudice. So let me be clear, you've got two things going on in the law. One is the law says you have to vote. Then the, all, the law also says under 112 that you cannot vote if it's gonna inure to your special private gain or loss or an associate or a, 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 um, one of the listed people in that statute. However, if you are looking at a vote and you, under, you because of your relationship to the person or because something that may have occurred in your own life, you're going to be biased or prejudiced within that vote and cannot vote with a clear mind, then you may abstain at that point. It doesn't necessarily require, require the following, filing of an 8B, but an 8B is a good decision. But the problem with 8B is it doesn't discuss all the different possibilities. And if you have a bias, if you know yourself that you're gonna have a bias or prejudice, you have to look at it like you, you are a juror. And as when we, from the criminal law world, whenever we pick a jury, the last thing we want in that jury is someone who has a bias or prejudice that's going to affect the outcome of the decision. So those are the things that I want you to remember as you go into your voting today. Um, um, I know that we've got other areas to cover in the ethics, and we'll get into those, but I know that we have a lot of people waiting, and, and we can move on with that. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. We'll move into item seven. Item seven. Contractor's license application. If I may, um, Mr. Chairman, call up Mr. Stephen Ritz because he's on the walker. We can get him up okay. first. Thank you. Mr. Stephen Ritz. <clears throat> Mr. Ritz, if you'll state your first and last name and address for the record, please. My name is Stephen. Ritz. I live in Escambia County, 3773 Deloach Street, 32514. Thank you, Mr. Ritz. Mr. Ritz is coming before the um, board today for a delinquent license of three years and 11 months. 
Mr. Ritz did pay the 150 to come in before the board. He has continued his education, if you can see in the application. He does have the remaining balance of the 512.50 in order to pay the remaining delinquent licensor. Mr. Ritz, if you could provide an explanation of your delinquency. There seemed to be a computer glitch and it overlooked the payment and we're sorry and now we have it corrected so it will never occur again. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Motion made. Executive, any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. None. The motion to approve the reinstatement subject to your final payment is approved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Ritz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next applicant is Mr. Charles Nettles. Chairman, Mr. Charles has two applications before us. The first application is for residential contractor. Residential contractor. After reviewing his application, we're recommending for him to go te for testing, sir. Okay, very good. Motion to approve. Anything? I say, would you like to say anything? <laughs> no, sir. Okay, very good. State your first and I'm sorry, yes. Chairman. First and last name and address for the record. Charles Anthony Nellis, County, 900 West Liberal Street. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded into discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the application for examination for Charles Nettles for residential contractor is approved. Thank you, Mr. Nettles. Now you can move to the second one. We'll move to the second application for unlimited roofing for Mr. Charles Nettles, sir. After reviewing this application, we recommend testing, sir. Very good. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded in the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, being none. The application for examination for Mr. Charles Nettles for roofing is approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Nettles. Don't come back to see us. <laughs> the next applicant is Louis Wilson. Mr. Wilson is not present, sir. Can I go? Yes. Ahead with this application. He's this application for examination is for unlimited roofing, sir. After reviewing his application, we do recommend testing, sir. Motion to approve. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the application for examination for Louis Wilson for roofing, roofing. unlimited roofing, is approved. Thank you, sir. That's it for applications. Thank you. Move into item eight. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Before we go into probable cause hearings, I just wanted to note that with Ms. Fiorello's resignation, that opens a vacancy on the board, and I just wanted it on the record that anyone that wishes to apply and hopefully make a difference um, can get me their resume before September 16th. Very good. All right, so we're moving into probable cause hearings, 8-1. This is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, state registered license number RG29110389. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220677-COM. It's in regard to John Hutchinson, the homeowner complainant at 3451 Oakmont Drive, Pensacola, Florida, which is in the city limits. If you are here to provide testimony on this hearing, if you can please stand and be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. I'm now going to turn it over to Melissa Reber, the investigator for this hearing. Hey, M Melissa, could I say something real quick? Sure. Uh, uh, Christy, is that it, the attorney? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I believe it was the meeting meeting before last, uh, the other attorney that was here. Uh, I recused myself from Matt Banks because of the, I did work for him, he did work for me. Yes. And I just felt like it was better to do that. Uh, he included at the, 
think it was a meeting before last. He included the attorney, uh, said, and he's recusing himself from Jesse Lacoste. I, now I went ahead and went along with that because I found out a, probably a month prior to that that they were brother-in-laws. And just to keep anything, you know, it just to just to keep any of the problems down with the conflict of interest. I don't know Jesse. He's, you know, but but because of this situation, I just recuse myself. So I just want to make that known right now. Yes. So, so we're not in that. So you have to make that decision for yourself whether or not in making this decision um, there you would fall into that second category, which is the bias or um, prejudice. That's yeah. your decision to make. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make that decision because I believe I would be biased uh, okay. towards Jesse and possibly towards uh, you know the the whole uh, the brother-in-law the whole the whole thing. I just feel like I'm just. Uh, at this point, I've already recused myself from one of Jesse Lacoste's cases, and I'm going to continue this, so I'll sign the form or whatever. I just feel like I cannot remain completely impartial at this point. Okay. So you don't feel that you can be fair I, I, I believe that I believe that uh, that I would have that I, that I would try my best to do so, but you know I don't at, at this point with these two particular cases, no. Sure. Yeah, I thought it did, but uh, and I had before, but since you brought it up, this is the first time I've ever heard this. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, codes. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. In this contractor hearing, competency hearing, uh, my investigation revealed. Probable cause for code section 1837C8. Excuse me, can you post that on the... <clears throat> that was code section 1837C8, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837C11, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. 1837D3A, violating any part of Florida statute chapter 455, fraud, deceit, misleading, or untrue representation, Florida statute 455-227-1A as amended, 1837-D-13-C-2, misconduct or incompetency in the practice of contracting as set forth in Florida statute 489, 129-1N, violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes, as amended. Escambia County Building Services staff received a formal complaint submitted by John Hutchinson in which he alleges that Jesse W. Lacoste, doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, failed to commence contracted work, failed to obtain permitting for contracted work, and failed to complete any of the contracted work. Hutchinson Home is located at 3451 Oakmont Drive in Pensacola City Limits. Hutchinson contracted with Lacoste on January 27, 2022 for a master bedroom renovation. The total cost of the work contained in the contract was 59125 Hutchinson paid a deposit of $17,000 on January 31st, 2022. There has been no work performed or refunded provided to Hutchinson 
from Lacoste. Lacoste has not responded to any communication from Escambia County staff about this complaint. Mr. Hutchinson, if you'd like to come to the podium. Good morning, my name is John Hutchinson, 3451 Oakmont Drive, Pensacola, 32503. I began discussions with Jesse Lacoste late last year about a bathroom remodeling, not a bedroom, but a bathroom remodeling project at my house. Uh, after several months of talking about the scope of the project, uh, I called him and said, when are we going to begin? He said, well, first you need to sign a contract and you need to give me a down payment before we can apply for a permit. I went to his office and I did that. I signed the contract. You have a copy of it. Uh, I provided a down payment of $17,000, which is 30% of the project cost, which I've uh, sub uh, subsequently learned is a violation of Florida statutes, but I provided that deposit. I didn't hear from him for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, after three months uh, of not returning my phone calls, I called him and uh, his project manager told me that everybody had resigned. He had a skeleton staff, and so I sent him an, an email requesting uh, that the project be canceled and I get my money back. And I got no response from him, so I had my attorney draft a demand letter, sent him the demand letter, no response to that. I filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau, no response to that. I filed a complaint with this board, no response to that. So my only conclusion is that his intention from the beginning was to steal my money, uh, and he's done that. So I would request from this board uh, a restitution order uh, so that I could pursue other legal avenues, including application to the state contractor fraud fund, uh, and that uh, restitution order is necessary for that. So I would, I would respectfully ask that you consider that so that I can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Entertain a motion to move to disciplinary hearing. Motion to move to disciplinary hearing. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. So so you would need, as we, we discussed at previous hearings, you would need to say whether those probable cause violations are what you are proceeding yes. with. Right, the cause as presented in the complaint are what we would proceed with to disciplinary hearing. Simply to understand that the motions dependent upon the violations, so quoted, presented. Any so, discussion? Okay, so what we're looking at is the John L. Hutchison complainant, and in the investigation, um, it shows code section 1837C8, 1837C11, 1837D3A, and 1837D13C2. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Um, yes. Sir. Yes. Mr. Hutchinson mentioned he'd been here to the board before and there was nothing done before, or, or is that just Mr. I don't think, I think he said he made a complaint. Okay, well, I, okay. Just, I didn't remember seeing it. Uh, just, okay, thank you sir for clarification. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, being none. The motion to send to disciplinary hearing Jesse Lacoste is approved. We'll move to item two. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item two is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. Again, state registered license number RG29110398. Contractor Competency Board, complaint number 220689, COM. It's in regard to Michael Moss, homeowner complainant at 2054 Mackey Key Drive, Pensacola, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony on this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. You just need to be sworn in. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll do the investigation notes okay. and then, yes, sir. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to hand it over to Melissa Reaver for her investigation notes. After investigation, the county alleged the following violations. 1837C6, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer. 1837C8, 
termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to this respective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837C11, code section 1837D13C3, and Florida statute 489-126-2A1, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. 18, this is a, a repeat, so strike that uh, from the top. 1837D, 13C3, is misconduct or incompetency in the practice of contracting as set forth in Florida Statute 489-129-1N and other form of misconduct or incompetency. Escambia County Building Services staff received a formal complaint submitted by Michael F. Moss in which he alleged that Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, failed to commence any contracted work or complete any contracted work. Moss's home is located at 2054 Mackey Key Drive in Pensacola. Moss contracted with Lacoste on August 12, 2021 for a home renovation project. The total cost of the work contained in the contract was $119,850. Moss paid a deposit of $24,000 on August 13, 2021. After several months of communication with Lacoste and many start dates, Moss sent a certified letter of cancellation of contract to Lacoste. Moss requested he be provided with an itemized account of charges for any cabinet architectural planning and refund of the difference of his $24,000 deposit. A review of the permitting for his project shows that Lacoste was issued a permit for a home remodel on November 5th, 2021. This permit was terminated by the owner based on the cancellation of the contract letter sent to Lacoste. Lacoste has not responded to any communications from Escambia County staff about this complaint. Mr. Moss? Uh, Michael Moss, uh, 2054 Mackey Key Drive, Pensacola. Um, nothing really uh, to add to uh, Ms. Reber's um, investigation notes uh, other than we did receive back the certified letter uh, which had been signed for and we have the receipt for the signed certified letter. Um, came back completely unopened, um, I think about a day after we got the notice for this hearing. Um, so aside from that, no other communications with uh, Mr. Lacoste um, uh, since he was notified both by email and certified letter that uh, um, we wanted uh, the itemized uh, accounting of any expenditures and uh, a refund of uh, anything else. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moss. Mr. Lacoste here. Your name and address, please, sir. Jesse Lacoste, 5974 Chi Chi Circle, Milton, Florida. You have anything to say? I do. Um, there are some inaccuracies there. We did. Mr. Lacoste, were you sworn in? Please go ahead and be sworn in. Is not this where the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. I did work with the uh, Mosses. I do want to state that I wasn't properly notified for this hearing, much like the hearings prior to this that were in my absence. Um, I was just made aware of this on Thursday. Uh, my correspondence with the board and board secretary was that I have not updated my information, but I did just receive letters on Thursday, so that tells me that I have updated my information. That was actually from a latest uh, additional continued request of mine. 
um, from August 2nd. Um, I just got a call back on Thursday prior to receiving the same day I received the letters. So I've, I've not had ample time to repair. I did let the board know that um, I'm receiving uh, retaining counsel on this matter. Um, I was notified that you guys would not continue to allow me to do that. Who notified you? Jennifer. Mm -hmm. That's not accurate, Mr. Lacoste. Our email, you talked about that your cancel would not be here. And on your behalf, even though you did not request a continuance, I talked to the chairman in case you did request a continuance, which was not received within time. Anyhow, the chairman was not inclined to honor that request. Um, and stated that you could come before the board and ask for a continuance of these hearings before the board. It has nothing to do with your counsel. Understood. My correspondence read a, a little bit differently, but um, and it addressed the not having the updated information, which has been updated for some time now. Um, that, I do appreciate your, your input. Mr. Uh, Cost, that's also not accurate. You were notified on several occasions to update your business address with our licensing division. You had not done that and probably still to date have not done that. We actually had to locate a physical address for you for your notices and ended up sending them to your home address. So I, I don't want to sound argumentative. As I stated prior, my email correspondence states something differently. I did get a call back on Thursday prior to receiving letters to my home which shows that that was updated. That was actually a callback for my request over a month prior. So, um, so I you did still want have to. The, you still have the option to request a delay. That is what I would like to do today. I would like ample time to meet with my counsel and, and address this at all. Mr. Chairman, I motion to deny that. Uh, uh, question to. I'll second that, then we go to discussion. I have a question before we even vote. Or you consider it? Can we do it for all three remaining? I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to take a minute to look into that to see okay. if we can just do that. If you would please. Sure. So we don't have to vote on each one. Mr. Lacoste, you can sit down if you want. Thank you, sir. Tobias, she looks this up. Entertain a five minute recess.
Mr. Chairman, um, what we did was we pulled up the procedure rules for the board, and according to the procedure rules, 16 hearing procedures, sub 5, the, the rule is, either party may request that a hearing be continued for good cause. A request for continuance must be made in writing no later than five calendar days before the hearing date. The chairman may, be de may determine whether or not to grant a request for continuance that has been timely filed. A request for continuance filed after the deadline shall be determined by the full board. So, uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, if um, I'm going to have Jennifer pull up the email that was received and read to the court what was sent in by um, Mr. Lacoste, so that the court can, so that the board can have a full consideration of whether or not they consider that a, a request for a written continuance. Okay. Two seconds. I'm bringing it up now. All right, so it says, good afternoon, Jennifer. I've received a letter from you pertaining to complainants. My counsel will not have availability for Wednesday, September 7th, nor will I have proper time to prepare for this matter without the admin staff I once employed and had regular access to. Additionally, if you will provide me instructions on the appeal process, thank you for your help. Have a blessed day. Jesse W. Lacoste. And then she had a reply that she sent to him. Um, so that, what was the date of that email? His email came in September 1st, 2022 at 2.41 p.m. My response to him was the next morning. And that response was? Good morning, Mr. Lacoste. The investigator, Melissa Reber, for contractor license complaints has communicated to you about each complaint as they have been submitted to the department. The cases being heard on September 7th, 2022 are the result of complaints that you were initially notified about in late July and early August, providing you ample time to respond. If you recall, Melissa, you and I had a telephone conversation in June in regard to the influx of cases that were being filed against your license after Melissa gave you a deadline in which to provide responses to other cases. At that time, you informed us that you were getting your bearings after having to switch offices, but you would be prepared to respond to the current and any future complaints. I informed you that a change in address was required to be reported to the licensing division, and you stated that you would get the address updated the following day. You, to date, have not updated your address with the licensing division. We have sent CCB notices to every address that we can locate for you, including your home address. It is unfortunate that your counsel would not be available on September 7th, 2022, and that you feel you will be unprepared. Although you did not specifically request a continuance of the hearings, I made contact with the chairman on your behalf. The chairman has advised that he would not be inclined to approve a request for continuance and that a request could be made to the board on the hearing date. The appeal process is defined within any final order issued by the board. You have had one final order issued against your license on July 11, 2022. Section 9 of the final order states, pursuant to Escambia County Code Section 1859A, respondent may petition the Board of County Commissioners for a review of this order. A petition setting forth this order together with a statement of facts establishing respondent's grievance shall be filed with the clerk of the Board of County Commissioners within 20 days of the date of this order. The appeal window for that final order has come and gone. If you should have any further questions in regard to this matter, please feel free to contact me. Thank you, Jennifer A. Hampton. Has there been any contact um, from an attorney on the behalf of Mr. Lacoste requesting a continuance? No. All right. And we just verified his licensing card has not been updated with a new address. Thank you, Madam Secretary. So this, right, for, for item one, we've already moved it to disciplinary hearing. Item two, is it Michael Moss? There was already a motion in a second. There was a motion. There was a motion was delayed. So restate the motion to move it. 
do. I didn't know if council had more to add. So at this time, I believe what he's asked, what he's asking for is a continuance as to, um, we need to go one by one to see what he's asking for a continuance for, okay. because you've got two things going on today. Um, aside from you have the probable cause hearings and you also have the disciplinary action. Yes, but he's, but not, those in don't relate. He he's not in the disciplinary action. Okay. So those won't relate to this him. This is I only apologize. probable cause. So as we go through those, if he's asking for a continuance, those need to go on the record. Um, which ones he's asking for a continuance? The first one he's already has already that's already been determined. been decided. So if he's asking for a continuance on the others, then we need to go by case number on those continuances and those requests, and the board will have to determine uh, whether or not the the request suffices within um, what the rule is, the written request. The court, of course, the the board could make a decision without that written request and could decide that the written request that, or the written email communication was sufficient for a written request and it was five days outside. It would have been the chairperson's decision. Um, and then, then uh, if he has an attorney, then there's been no communication from that, that attorney and that attorney would need to contact the board if they wanted a continuance. So right now we're at item two. Okay. Mr. Chair, I continue my motion to deny the request for delay from Mr. Lacoste on the item number two. Moss. Item number two. Okay. And the reason for that is maybe a dual fold. The people, the, the uh, complainants, the process to get to this recovery fund that Mr. Moss mentioned, that these others mentioned, is well, this is, down. We're not we're not doing any discipline. We just want to take it to a disciplinary hearing. I understand, hearing. but so. this this will help to keep the, the okay. uh, delays from happening. That's my purpose. We have a motion. Is there a second? Uh, there's a second uh, question. Do we need to state the uh, reference number for the record as yes. part of the motion? Okay. That's up to you, Mr. Chairman. What's that? I'm well, about to approach before decision okay. is made since I okay. have a little bit of information about what was just discussed. So a, a few facts uh, from what was just released to you guys. Uh, the verbal conversation was very generic, and I was told that letters would be provided. As I've already stated, I just got those letters this length of time later, last Thursday. Um, the address is updated, in fact. I know it was just told to you guys again. It was not. I'm actually looking at an email from Ternessa White that works just in this other room from August 24th, that it was finally updated per my latest continued request a month prior to this email. So it's contrary to what's being told here. Um, the license revocation. I just got the letter from our license revocation last Thursday, the same day as the complainant letters. Much after my appeal process is coming on. So there's been many, many, I, this has been an uphill battle for me with the communication, the board with, with Mr. Lacoste, I have conduct. a, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I have a question for Mr. Lacoste. I can provide the email. Would, would it be safe to say that these owners have tried to reach you in the past so you knew something was going on with I've, this? I've actually tried to reach them. I, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm not talking about this individual case. Like my, my point in asking is this, Surely you knew all of this was coming about and you're, you're making us think that you were unprepared because you didn't know and I don't uh, Mr. Cause I don't know how the world you could not know Yeah, I, I didn't know who the complainants were from. I did not know that information I, I've out of 87 clients. I have four so I did not know where those, those were coming from what the details were about what they were challenging have, If I if I could uh, Mr. Chairman no I apologize uh, for interrupting, but there are specific requirements of where those letters have to be sent and the dates um, of the of the updates of the information. And we're seeking some further information on when this when this address was updated. Um, regardless of whether or not he he knew, there has to be some there's specific procedures that we have to follow. So we're checking on that right now. If, if the if the if the board would allow. But he can always appeal with the board of county commissioners if he would like our decision. At the this decision, point, we're not the in a decision we're issue. looking right. for right. is to whether this should go to probable 
to uh, disciplinary hearing. Yes, sir. But what we need to make sure is that the proper notice was sent and that we had the proper address when we sent the notice. That's what we're checking uh, on, if is, you don't mind. Is she checking on it? Yes, sir. That's, for the record, that's Melissa Reaver is checking on that. And that change of status was finally completed on August 24th. That's what my letter says. I think we need to restate the motion to include the reference number anyway, so. Okay, well. You can withdraw the motion. What's that? I'm sorry, I forget about the microphone. Uh, it'll be just a moment, but uh, okay. we're checking with the person he um, said that he communicated with by email. Quick if question. we want to take another recess. Can I ask a quick question while we're waiting? Is um, What's the time frame between uh, recommending for disciplinary hearing and that hearing being able to be taken? Is there a delay? So historically, there has been a delay from probable cause to disciplinary hearing. We give them a two-month window for administrative complaint to be drafted, revised, approved, and then sent out within that required notice window. Um, we are trying to expedite that process because there have been so many complaints um, and, you know, with these special hearings that we've uh, incorporated. So that window will be shorter, um, hopefully, you know, a month and a half instead of, or a month, possibly. But it's not a statutory limit. No, 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 no. It's, it's just, just a, a administrative. <laughs> it's administrative. logistics of how long it takes to draft these things. Okay. Thank you. You got the information? If you give us just a moment, Your Honor, we're um, looking for that email communication. It's my understanding that Melissa Reaver spoke to the individual that the email communication was with. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. If you could explain to the board. Um, Trinasa White states that there was an email where Mr. Lacoste did put the home address, but she sent him the change of status form and told him it would have to be put on that and he has never returned the form. 
and that is a requirement. Any change to a license card has to be on an official document, and that is a change of status form that is required to be submitted. So is he has not updated his? To date, he has not updated his license card with a correct address. Okay, thank you. I was informed by the same individual that everything was updated the same date that I received the email uh, on my phone call with her. It's not in accordance with the statutes and ordinance. I understand, but okay. just moments ago that email didn't exist. Now it does. Miss White this will be here ongoing, in just a moment. This is an ongoing issue. With in the past, I've with ample time and notice, I provided documentation, information, files several inches thick that's been overlooked by the board. I've I brought this to. Melissa and Jennifer's attention and had previous procedural issues that's catapulted this situation and that's why I don't know what's coming down the pipeline and that's also why it's actually caused some of this mess with new clients because the hysteria surrounding it. This is a county step requirement not a board requirement. Understood. And I'm you, just pointing out misinformation. Not, you have not followed the requirements of the county. I have, sir. According to the information we have, you have not. It's not on and a form that's understood. required. I know what they're saying, but I've also pointed out several other inaccuracies that they've shared this just this morning. Well, we're talking about this particular accuracy that you have not done, and that's on the form that to let the, them know your official change of address. I you have not what done that, I've updated that information, but I understand what you're saying. But you have not submitted it on the proper form to the county and made it official. That is inaccurate, but I understand what you're saying. Can we proceed? Mr. Chairman, um, Ms. Ms. White, is, is she coming into the building now? We received notice that Ms. White is actually returning to the building and should be here in just a moment. Okay. If, if you want to take a brief recess. Um, or if you want to, um, she will be here and she can talk, tell the court exactly, um, tell the, the board. board exactly, uh, and I'll actually provide us a copy of that email communication, if, the, if that would help the board's decision. Chair, we, we're in discussion. Can I ask the attorney something real quick? <coughs> yeah. Is there, uh, is there a motion before the board? There it is. Okay. We, we need to remain on that. We need to remain on that task. That's what that's okay. what my discussion is. Okay, that's up to um, Mr. Chairman yeah. right now, because I know he's he's already recused himself. He can certainly be involved in the conversation. He's already explained his bias, or if he has a bias that he feels that he has a bias or he can not be impartial. But if you want to ask me a question, we can do that. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. You had said that I could still participate in these discussion groups even though I recuse myself. Is that correct? Right. Would you advise it? I can't advise you as to whether or not you should get involved. That's your decision. That's the reason why I didn't want to be in there because I can't help it. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Do you need to take can, a moment to, to gather your thoughts on this? No, I would like to ask uh, uh, Mr. LaCosta a couple of questions in reference to this motion that's been made. Uh, well, I. And that's up to you, Chair. I would say just you not do that. <laughs> we do Don't. have more information coming in. If you want to wait okay. till that information comes in, that may assist you in de deciding, making your decision about what you want to say. All right. Thank you. Sure. The board's going to take a five minute recess.
The board is back in session. Mr. Chairman, if I can make a couple of recommendations, we have in front of us Ms. White, who the, conversa who the email conversation was supposed to have been with, um, alleged to have been with by um, Mr. Lacoste. She has a copy of the email and she could um, be sworn in at this time and she'll give you the information ha she has regarding his updated information. Okay. Do you solve this for the testimony? Do you solve this for the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, on August the 3rd, um, Mr. Lacoste left a voicemail. I was out of the office. I called Mr. Lacoste back, um, received some information via over the phone from him, change of address, change of email, change of phone number. Then I proceeded to let Mr. Lacoste know that I would be sending him which is what we call a change of status, where he would need to list that on a form, have it notarized before I could go in and physically change it. That gives us to let us know that it's the contractor that's actually changing, changing their information and just not a random person. Um, August the 24th, I did send him that change of status form with no response back from Mr. Lacoste yet um, of the change. I did write his information on a sticky note and handed it to the investigator that day just to let her know, hey, I talked to Lacoste. He said he changed his information. I sent him our um, change of status form for him to send it back. I haven't received anything from Mr. Lacoste as of today. Very good. Does the board have any questions for her? No question. Anybody? No. Okay. Um, in addition, um, in a situation where you have actual notice, um, then the issue of written notice is waived. In this situation, um, uh, Jennifer Hamilton can testify. I'm sorry, Hampton can testify at the, as sworn in um, her procedure and when approximately the date she sent the notice out to the known address at the time. Okay. She needs to be sworn. Do you solve this for the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Which notice are we recommending? We can do the 4400 and the other. Or that is so notices are required to go to the address on file for the um, contractor. Um, the address we have on file to date is uh, 4400 Valley Boulevard, right? Suite, I think, 41A. Um, and then once he, uh, Mr. Lacoste made us aware verbally that he was no longer there and that he was making arrangements to, to move locations, um, we began sending them to the Chi Chi Circle address. Um, his notices have been sent for each hearing. Um, they typically go out 10 days prior to, usually it's more than 10 days because I wanna make sure they have their ability to provide any documentation to be added to the agenda. Um, but the requirement is 10 days prior to uh, the hearing. Um, so. If you could clarify for the board um, how you calculate the 10 days. So I do 10 business days. Although our rules and procedures, which you see on the screen, says just 10 days notice, I do 10 business days. And since then you've had communication that he had received the letter. So yes, we do receive back um, sporadically where he has signed for some of these communications. All right, and as far as a direct communication, you had one with him on September 1st? I think I might have emailed him back the second. Okay, but he sent you an email yes. on September 1st? That was a, yes, September 1st, and I emailed back the second. And as of September 1st, the contents which you, which you read into the record earlier, you would swear to those contents at this time? Oh, yes. And on that, you said that my counsel will not have a bail. He told you... My counsel will not have availability for Wednesday, September 7th? That's correct. Okay. And that was on September 1st? Yes. Okay. Which was only six days, not over 10, before this, the same day I received the letters that I corresponded with Ms. Hampton. Yeah, no doubt I received it my new address. I would also like to mention that, of course, we have an exhibit that I did provide address. information. Now, I know they're saying they haven't restored that, um, that actual document. That should have been received as well. Um, but again, I pointed out many other inaccuracies, and they did indeed have the information over a month before. 
And mind you, this is not the first time. This has been months and months ongoing that I've tried to update this information. Mr. So Lacoste, I've come back to the point when I made it to the point I made. The information was not official. I don't care what you say, it was not official. It needs to be on an official documented form. Understood. And that form is not in our possession, has not been sent in. That's what's been stated this morning. They stated that's they right. that form. That's what's been stated this morning. But you keep saying you provide them the information. You haven't. Mr. Chair, I, I disagree with you, but I understand. That that's okay. was also that that form was not even provided to me until many months after a lot of these other proceedings had already happened in my absence. Which is this is why this is a snowballing effect because of the procedural regardless issues if I if I may clarify the board the full board has the option of honoring his request for a continuance right the, the procedure requires a written request but if, if the board decided to waive that they could it's certainly within your realm um, but in addition to that at this point there would have to be good cause shown for a continuance and that would also be a decision based on the board's discretion okay would you like to restate your motion? Yes, I would like to deny the request for delay of case number 220689COM. Second. Who seconded? Brian. Okay, so there's a motion to deny a continuance of this case, uh, complaint CCB 220689COM, and it's seconded. Is there any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion's approved. The request for continuance is denied. I understand. I'm not the only name in the media right now. Everyone has seen the fire that's coming down on this board and this continued misconduct is why. I would not be in this situation if this wasn't a snowball effect from the misconduct of this board, even resulting in a board member being removed because of my very case. If there's misconduct that results in a board member being removed, then there must be a resolution in my case which has not taken place and has moved forward and progressed in my absence. That is an issue and it needs to be made right. Your Honor, if, uh, Mr. Chairman, if he, um, so if, if he won't, if he's asking for a continuance as to the other one, then that would also have to be addressed separately. No, no, all of them would have to be. But I mean on the record, it would be right. the Yes, I see. Thank you. But for item number two, the continuance is denied. Mr. Chairman, we did have a, a late comer who made it in after um, public forum was already, we had moved on from public forum. She would like the opportunity to uh, address the board at this time. Her name is Melissa Pino. Okay. Melissa Pino, and, and she says it is on this particular item. Okay. Jennifer, I'm not an expert witness or an injured party. Do I still have to swear in? Okay. Do you solemnly swear to testify you're about to believe the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you. And Chairman Matthews, I appreciate you allowing me to um, come in. And this is just going to be very brief because what I had intended to do immediately upon hearing Mr. Lacoste charge um, county staff multiple county staff with falsehoods on what is public record. I immediately public record requested that email exchange from Ms. Hampton and she's already fulfilled it. Thank you. And then they read it aloud. Um, I'm assuming into the record, uh, it, it verbally isn't enough. I'd like to suggest that a hard copy of that email exchange go into the record and the reason that it's pertinent to the the um, what will be a motion to either um, you know accept or deny moving this from pro probable cause to disciplinary is I is it not abundantly clear that this gentleman has a problem with facts and truth 
even while under oath. I can't even count how many whoppers he just dropped and then trying to turn tables on the board. And so I do think that it's relevant while you're considering whether to move this to disciplinary that you just heard and I have in my email the document that completely blows out of the water everything that he said about his communication with Ms. Hampton. And then you had to bring another county staff person in here to dispute his ensuing falsehoods. And I predict that this behavior will continue to occur and he'll try to drag this out through every single item when he appears before your board. So please do keep that in mind when you're making your decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, those can be printed out and added to the record at the board's request. Please do. Thank you. It will be subsequent to today. We'll, we'll get it in there. We're back on item two. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. So um, the investigative report was already provided. Mr. Moss has already spoken to this, and, and Mr. Lacoste also spoke. Can, so. can you bring up the complaint again so we yes. can state the motion? Um, the investigative report? Yes. Yes, sir. So um, I got it. just to reiterate, we are looking at 1837C6, 1837C8, 1837C11. These other two were stricken. They were a duplicative. And 1837D13C3. Uh, I'll make a motion. We take those to this prior hearing. I'll, so say, I'll second this complaint to this one. Yes. Subject to these allegations. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any, any discussion? Admitted none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed by sign. Seeing none. Item two. The contract and conference board complaint number two C two two zero six eight nine C O M. For the record, the alleged violations within that um, investigative report are 1837C6. Yeah, I got it. 1837C8. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So now move to item three. Item three is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC. State registered license number RG2911039. Contractor competency board complaint number 2208107COM. It's in regard to Willie and Kalita Stevens, homeowner complainants at 4125 Kingsbury Drive, Pensacola, Florida. This is also in the city limits. If you are going to provide testimony in regards to this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Melissa Reber for her report. After conducting it, after conducting this investigation, the county alleges the following violations. 1837C5, diversion of funds or property received for prosecution or completion of a particular construction project, operation by the contractor, when as a result of such diversion, the contractor is or will be unable to fulfill the terms of his obligations of the contract. 1837C6, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer. Code section 1837C11, sorry about that. Code section 1837, what am I looking at? I apologize. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, apply for permits necessary to do the work within 30 days after the payment is made, except where the work does not require a permit, 
under the application codes and conduct. I'm sorry, contracting. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, at this point, sorry, I believe Mr. Read. Lacoste had requested a continuance. If he wants to renew that continuance as to this particular hearing, then he would need to renew that on the record now um, and then Why before proceeding into the allegations within the probable cause state. Where's my old one? Okay. He'll need to be, um, uh, he's already been sworn in. As you stated, I would like to request that continuance for the same reasons as the first. It does. Okay. Motion to deny. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. The end of discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Melissa is going to finish her investigation notes. Okay. Escambia County Building Services staff received a formal complaint submitted by Willie and Kalita Stevens in which they allege that Jesse W. Lacoste, doing business as Lacoste Construction, has failed to pay for plumbing subcontract work, job abandonment for 90 days, and failing to complete contracted work. Stevenson's home is located at 4125 Kingsbury Drive in Pensacola, Florida, city limits. Stevens' home sustained damage in October of 2021 when they experienced backup into their kitchen, laundry room, and office area from channel rot and severely corroded iron piping under the home's foundation. The Stevens contacted their homeowner's insurance company working through the claims process and attempting on their own to work with several independent plumbers to get the drainage problem resolved. Eventually, Stevens enlisted the help of Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, to facilitate, facilitate the damages and repair to their home. On January 13th, 2022, the Stevens signed an assignment of insurance benefits to Lacoste on January 17th, 2022, Lacoste provided an estimate for repair of the pipes, drains, drainages to the interior of the home in the amount of $15,495.27. February 15th, 2022, Stevens received a check for their insurance claim in the amount of $11,373.35 which Stevens, along with his mortgage, endorsed over to Lacoste. In March 2022, J&M Plumbing and Gas Incorporated contacted, contracted with Lacoste to make the necessary repairs to the sewer pipes under the foundation of the Stevens home. In April of 2022, J&M obtained the applicable permits and began the repairs. On March 4th, 2022, Stevens reached out to Lacoste to inquire when the plumbing inspection would be made. On May 5th, 2022, an inspection was performed by city inspections. However, the inspection failed. On May 12th, Stevens spoke with the owner of J&M and learned that Lacoste had not paid J&M for the work. Stevens reached out to Lacoste requesting that the plumber be paid so final work and inspections could be done and also that Lacoste refund the balance of the insurance proceeds received by Lacoste so the Stevens could get the rest of the work done. June 21st, Stevens reached out again to J&M and learned they still had not received payment for the work. 
j and Plumbing completed the necessary corrections on the project and passed final inspection on July 5th. Despite not having been paid by Lacoste, Stevens contacted the law group DSK and on July 26th, DSK sent a demand letter to Lacoste stating that j and Plumbing should be satisfied in the balance of the insurance proceeds returned to Stevens. Stephen states that out of the $11,373.35 insurance proceeds received by Lacoste, j and Plumbing's invoice should be satisfied for $7,100. The concrete debris should have been removed and the concrete patio repaired. Lacoste was also responsible to repair the water-damaged laminate flooring in the Stevens home. Stevens states he should be reimbursed the balance of $4,273.35 from the insurance proceeds. Lacoste has not responded to any communication from Escambia County staff about this complaint. Mr. Stevens? My name is Willie Stevens. I'm at 4125 Kingsbury Drive in Pensacola, Florida. Um, just to state that um, Mr. Lacoste has, I had publicly stated that he had, um, no one's tried to reach out to him, that in fact that he's tried to reach out to his customers. Um, however, I've made phone calls at his office. I talked to um, people that was employed by him. Um, I've also made contact with the state attorney's office, DBP, DBPR um, for Florida, and I also went ahead and contacted them through Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, he finally replied um, as my statement to him was, hello, Jesse, I'm contacting you requesting return of my money, the $11,373.35 that we, that we handed you to repair our home. We have already contacted our lawyer, which sent you a letter, which you have not replied to. We have spoken to the state attorney's office, filed against you with the competency board. We've tried to contact you in multiple ways. Do the right thing, Jesse. I was going to put this, post this to your Facebook wall, but I'd rather handle this privately. I know the competency board has stripped you of your license. The state of Florida will follow suit. If you want to work this out, will please contact me. Um, that was August 11th. August 11th at 5:34, he responded, "I just happened to spot this message in the request inbox. I have not been made aware of any attempt to contact, uh, contact, and I'm of course confused by the seemingly threatening language, but always willing to work amicably. Amicably, please provide me with your best contact so I can give you a call promptly during business hours. I provided him with my phone number, um, which on August the 12th he did call." I missed it and he left me a voicemail. I returned his call approximately 30 minutes later. I called him twice. His voicemail was full. I sent him a message through the same way that he responded through Facebook. I told him I left him a voicemail and to call me back. He has not called me back yet. Um, also, I want to say that I'm also a trustee of one of the local churches here, which contracted with um, Lacoste Construction before I did. Um, he was highly recommended through, through some of the county. And as I was looking for our home repair, I, I reached out to a, a bunch of people who did business with Lacoste and they highly recommended him as well. Um, however, I know for a fact that our church has taken or has given him seventy thousand dollars deposit, which he has not performed any of the work. So that should be coming in front of the competency board in a in a matter of weeks as well. Thank you. I believe Mr. Lacoste. I wanted to address a few items in that discussion. Um, the correspondence that he read back and forth through Facebook is accurate. Um, <clears throat> that was the first time 
that I actually had a communication connect to me. Um, it wasn't a message request. We're not friends on Facebook. So I don't know if you know how that works. That goes into a hidden message folder. Once I did see it, I did respond promptly, as stated. Um, I'm actually the one who made the latest phone call. I apologize if you didn't receive that, and I'd be glad to speak with you after. Um, but yes, I did attempt as soon as I was made aware of this situation. Um, it's no secret um, of my unrelated incarceration as well as the licensure removal and a lot of the procedures that took place in my absence. So it's really tied my hands to be able to take care of a lot of these issues. And as I'm learning about them, that's kind of the angle that I'm having to approach them from. Thank you. I'll make a motion to move the alleged violations to disciplinary hearings, which are 18-37 parens C and 5. 18-37 C, print 6 and Florida statute 8489.126 print 2 print A1 Motions made is there a second? Second. Motion made seconded is there in the discussion? Just a reminder to the board members whenever you are communicating or making a motion in a second if you could please have your microphones on Viewers um, from home or anywhere else cannot hear you. Okay. Is it on? It is on. So you heard, we're good? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay, motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Big none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Big none. The motion to Pass the uh, item three, complaint numbers 2208107 COM to disciplinary hearing is approved. We'll move to item four. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item four, Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, state registered license number RG291103. 980 Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 2208124COM. It's in regard to Donald Dellinger doing business as Comeback Restoration. Complainant uh, 1809 East Bars Street, Pensacola, mm -hmm. Florida, City Limits. Now that is his business address, not the actual address <clears throat> of uh, the complaint. That's his business address. If you are here to provide testimony, in regard to this matter, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Nobody's here. Does not appear so, sir. Mr. Lacoste, again, did you want to request a continuance of this board for this hearing? I would like to request for it to be dismissed. It's actually attached to the previous um, case with the grace that's uh, our judgments already been passed on that in my absence which I've discussed this morning and it's not a an additional client it's actually a subcontractor and a lot of the claims that he's made in there about the um, um, <clears throat> documents filed they've already been dropped so you're not requesting a continuance unless it's dismissed then absolutely I want to continue so I can prepare and attack it We'll have to respond to the complaint by the investigator. We'll make that decision later. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yeah. I went and looked at these last night and I believe that this particular company has a spreadsheet. If Ms. Jennifer could put it up, there's like a whole bunch of jobs that this 86,000 broke down into like a whole bunch. Am I correct, Mr. Jennifer? That is correct. So and I don't think he, he said it was tied to one job, but I think from what he sent in, it's tied into like a whole bunch. Yeah. Uh, you have a you have an investigator's uh, report, don't you? I do. Okay, please. Hang on just a second, sir. Just to clarify for the record, um, uh, Chair, uh, uh, Board Person Lister, um, what you were stating is that you reviewed this agenda or the documents attached to the agenda last night. Of okay, I just wanted to make sure you, there wasn't anything being brought in from the outside. You're relying on what's before you today. I went online and looked at the 
The records that the, are before you today. The whole thing. I look. I actually looked through everything. Okay. <laughs> I was up late last night. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dillinger did contact me. He had a family emergency and had to go out of town, which is why he isn't present today. Um, after this investigation, the county alleges Code Section 1837C6, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer. Escambia County Building Services staff received a formal complaint submitted by Donald Dillinger doing business as comeback restoration in which he alleges that Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group LLC failed to pay for moisture mapping and or mold analysis reporting services where comeback restoration subcontract subcontracted that work from Lacoste. Dillinger further alleges that Lacoste was billed and was paid, well, I'm sorry, Lacoste billed and was paid for those services through insurance proceeds that Lacoste filed on behalf of Lacoste clients. Dillinger alleges that Lacoste never paid comeback restoration for those services his company provided. Dillinger states that he is owed approximately 86,000 from Lacoste and he has been forced to place claims of liens against approximately 20 property owners, which were clients of Lacoste. Lacoste has not responded to any communication from Escambia County staff about this complaint. The document that Mr. Lister was referencing is being brought up on your screen now. And board, if I could, I would add um, most of these claimants, not all, have contested the liens that come back put on their property. Mr. Lacoste? That is partially accurate. I do appreciate that. It was actually Lacoste that handled that for them. And there's not, to my knowledge, any standing liens on any property. What I was referring to earlier, Mr. Lister, is that entirety that was attached to a case with, with the Grays uh, prior, and we discussed all of those liens at that time, not just one job. They went out, combat restoration went out and basically just filed a lien against every job they had in their file with Lacoste. Some of those they never even touched. All of those have been satisfied at this time. Um, pertaining to the original project that brought up the discussion with the Grays, they never finished that project. It was the not the entirety of a home, the majority of a home, they handled just the kitchen. Lacoste went in and handled the rest of the project. That's why they were not satisfied on the full bill, which they were aware of. We did make multiple attempts, which I have a record of, to try to satisfy the portion they were owed. Uh, we were told at that time that it was all or nothing. Um, I can't answer right now, again, because not having proper time to prepare whether a payment was made on that job. I know many payments were made, anything that they would accept and anything that was a justified payment. This was stemming from a situation uh, with Lacoste and four other companies handling some of the storm work and some of these insurance related projects where we had an agreement to go in and after a certain amount of time, we would go after the carrier and not after the client. Um, Donald Dillinger with Combat Restoration was the only one of the group of five that decided to withdraw from that once monies were owed and once he got in a tight financial situation 120 days down the road. Those agreements are in writing. Thank you. Can you bring the chart, the uh, alleged violations back up, please? There it is. Make a motion to proceed to disciplinary hearing uh, citing the alleged violation 18 37 parens C parens 6. That's for uh, complaint 228124 COM. You have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I, I think he had requested um, uh, a delay. First, dismissal. Dismiss of a dismissal, and then a delay if we didn't dismiss. 
is what I recall. Mm -hmm. Did you address that first, right? I think so. I think we need to, we're, we're moving forward with, well, if I'm moving forward with this um, motion that it, it's insinuated, we're not dismissing it. So uh, I don't know how you can make a motion, then come back and say you can't uh, want to delay. So, so uh, if, if I could, um, Mr. Lacoste, if you could come back to the microphone and then the board could straighten out if he, was he asking for a continuance or a dismissal? He asked for a dismissal. I originally thought there would be an automatic dismissal, being that the members, the, the complaint that's not here is not a client, and all of the things they address in there are not so. There's there is no standing liens on any property. Um, but if that's not the case, then yes, I would like ample time to prepare and attack this. I have documentation that represents everything I've stated this morning. So there's no requirement that it be a property owner to file a complaint. It can be a supplier, um, and that's what happened here. As a supplier filed a complaint. It's a legitimate complaint. And he doesn't have to be in attendance. That is correct. He does not he's not required to be in attendance. So that answers the question about So then the court then the board um, should make a determination as to whether or not it, it would be dismissed, which will probably be answered in the motion that's been made. But if, you might want to go ahead and just do a separate um, put a hold on the motion that you currently have. Um, resolve the dismissal and resolve the continuance question. I put a hold on the motion. Okay. Entertain a motion to deny the dismissal. Motion to deny. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. <clears throat> Being none, the motion to deny dismissal is approved. Then the second issue, I believe he's also asking for a continuance. A motion to um, deny the request for continuance of case number 2208124COM. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to deny. No. Got to get my motions right. Continuance is approved. The motion to deny the continuance deny is approved. Deny continuance is approved. And then finally you have the motion now that's on the hold. Yeah, take the motion previously made off hold and we have a second, I believe. You had a motion then made and seconded second. to uh, uh, refer to uh, disciplinary hearing. Is there any discussion on this motion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to send case 2208124COM to disciplinary hearing is approved. Understood, thank you. We'll move to item five. Item five, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 220683COM. It's in regards to Marla Benjamin, homeowner complainant at 1488 Knollwood Drive, Pensacola, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony in regards to this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa Reber for her investigation notes. After investigation of this case, it's alleged that Matt Banks is in violation of 1837C6, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer, 1837C8, 
termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days if the contractor terminates said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Code section 1837D13C3 and Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, finding that the contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. 1837D3A, violating any part of Florida Statute 455, fraud, deceit, misleading, or untrue representation, Florida Statute 455-227-1A as amended. 1837D4, violation of state or local building codes or laws, Florida Statute 489-129-1D as amended. 1837D9J, failure to notify a residential property owner of recovery fund, Florida Statute 489-119 as amended. Escambia County Building Services staff received a formal complaint submitted by Marla Benjamin in which she alleged that Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC failed to commence contracted work on provided start date, failed to obtain permitting for contracted work, and failed to complete contracted work by the projected end date. <laughs> Benjamin's home is located at 1488 Knollwood Drive, Cantonment, Florida. Benjamin contracted with Banks on May 12, 2020 to demolish a prefab sunroom and build a new room and carport. The total cost of the work contained in the contract was $59,900 and Benjamin paid a deposit of $30,000 contract did not contain the required clause informing Benjamin of the Florida Homeowners Construction Recovery Fund. Banks obtained an alteration permit on August 7, 2020 and work began on September 3, 2020. Benjamin states that work was very slow. Someone would show up and work for a few hours. Then it would be days and months before work would begin again. Benjamin states that when she notified Banks the lack of work getting done, she was always given an excuse. Benjamin says it was almost a year before the new concrete slab was poured. On September 2nd, 2021, Benjamin states that a partial framing package was delivered and on September 9th and 10th, three walls were framed and nine incorrect windows installed. On September 10th, 2021, Banks requested the second draw for trusses and roofing material. Benjamin issued a check for $15,000. On, on October 20th, 2021, Benjamin states that weathered, warped, and broken trusses were delivered, but no roofing material was ever received. On December 15th, 2021, Benjamin states that three six by six posts and used laminated veneer lumber was delivered for the carport roof. Benjamin states that the room addition has been left open to the elements and that a roof was never installed. January 7th, 2022, Benjamin states she received a letter from Milton Trust stating that a lien would be placed on her home for lack of payment for the delivered trusses. On January 27th, 2022, Benjamin's attorney sent a letter of demand for a sworn statement of account as well as termination of contract and return of funds. Benjamin states that banks refused service of the notice. A review of the permitting for the project shows that a foundation inspection passed on June 6, 2021 and Benjamin, Benjamin terminated the permit on April 26, 2022. Banks has not responded to any communication from Escambia County staff about this complaint. Ms. Benjamin?
Merle Benjamin, 1488 Knollwood Drive, Cantonment. I really don't have much to add to what Ms. Reber had to say, um, other than the fact that what work he did do was really inferior. Uh, multiple nails missed two by fours and, and uh, said the wrong windows were put in. Uh, there was never an inspection done on anything after the footers were dug. That was the only inspection that was ever performed. There was none on the windows or uh, most of the hurricane strapping on the walls weren't put in. Uh, needless to say, the new contractors had to remove those walls because they were no longer any good and uh, new windows ordered and all that. So basically, I'm starting all over again. The only thing I have is a concrete slab and minus $45,000. We're sorry to hear that. Thank you. And one more thing, and I would like restitution. Okay. Thank you. Entertain a motion to send the plate to disciplinary hearing based on the violations alleged. Make a motion to take the disciplinary hearing based on the alleged violations 18-37C16, 18-37C8, Florida Statute 489, dot one two six two a one one no just one just one mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 18 dash 37 d three <clears throat> as part of florida statute change 455 uh, and amended in florida statute 455 dot 227 paren one paren a 18 dash 37 d four also, Florida Statute 489.129, print 1, print D, as amended. 18-37D, 9J, uh, as amended by Florida Statute 489.119.119. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to ascend. Uh, complaint numbers 220683C0M to disciplinary hearing is approved. Item 6. I don't know. Item 6 Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. The contractor competency board complaint number 2208114COM. It's in regard to Brandon and April Amos, homeowners complainants at 7980 Highway 97, McDavid, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony in regard to this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. I'm going to turn it over to Melissa to give her investigation report. After investigation, the county alleged violations 1837C6, financial mismanagement or misconduct in the practice of contracting that causes financial harm to a customer, 1837C8, termination of a construction project in which the contractor is engaged or under contract to shall be considered to have been abandoned after 90 days. If the contract contractor terminated said project without notification to the prospective owner and without just cause for such abandonment. Florida Statute 489-126-2A-1 apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made except where the work does not require a permit under the applicable codes and ordinances 1837d9j failure to notify residential property owner of recovery fund florida statute 489-119 as amended and 1837d 12B, committing fraud or deceit in the practice of contracting, 
Florida Statute 489-129-1M as amended, causing monetary or other harm to licensee, customer, or physical harm to any person. Escambia County Building Services staff received a formal complaint submitted by Brandon and April Amos in which they allege that Matthew S. Banks <clears throat> doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, failed to commence contracted work by the contracted start date or complete any contracted work by the projected end date. Amos' home is located at 7980 Highway 97, McDavid, Florida. Amos contracted with Banks on December 3rd, 2021 to build a new single family dwelling. The total cost of the work contained in the contract was $360,750 with a start date of 30 to 60 days after the loan closing. The contract did not contain the required clause informing Amos of the Florida Homeowners Construction Recovery Fund. On January 27th, 2022, Amos's mortgage lender issued an initial disbursement of $36,075 to Banks Construction. On June 3rd, 2022, due to no work at all being performed, Amos sent a certified demand letter to Banks canceling the contract and demanding an itemized statement returned of funds, plans, and associated documents related to the contract. A review of the permitting for this project shows that Banks was issued a permit for a new single family dwelling and new roof permit on January 24th, 2022. Both permits were terminated by Amos on July 22nd, 2022. Banks has not responded to any communication from Escambia County staff about this complaint. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is not the way that I'd like to meet any of you, but um, can, can we have our name and address? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is April Amos, and we have a property at 7980 Highway 97, McDavid, Florida 32568. Um, so our case is pretty cut and dry. Um, you know, we talked to some builders. We had um, chose banks to do that. He received a check. He left um, the building we signed all the papers he went straight to the bank he cashed our check and that was it he never set foot on our property um so matt sent me um an email and it said that i canceled the contract out of convenience i hope he goes back and he looks at this video because i want to name some of these conveniences that i have to face every day okay i have plans on um, a home of my forever home that I'll never get to get back. I'm going to have to pay for those again. I have to look at my two children every day and wonder why we have to live in a rental because we were in a camper when we first started out with Matt and now we have to live in a rental. Okay, we have to pay the mortgage company back every dime that he took from us. I have to drive 30 minutes to take my children to school every day. Our property where we were going to live is walking distance to one of my daughter's middle schools. The survey company, Matt ordered a survey that we did not need. We already had a survey. They, they have asked us to pay them $4,200. I can't even afford to get a lawyer. He took everything we had everything and then i lost pto today at my nursing job to be here to cry in front of all of you about a man taking money that didn't belong to him this is devastating for my family i know that this has happened to so many other people and it's worse off but you know what jesse showed up today i don't see him at. You know, Jesse's got an uphill battle. That's a hill that he created. I did not create the hill that I have to climb, that my husband has to climb, that my two daughters have to climb. I don't think 
I can get the recovery fund because you have to build or finish the project within a year. Matt underbid our property. He took the money. He knew that day he was never going to step foot on our property. No moral compass. None. No moral compass. If I've learned one thing from this, it is never expect people to treat you the way that you would treat them because I would never do this to anybody. Thank you for listening to me today. I am asking for restitution, even though I may not be able to, to receive that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do what we can. Can you bring back the... Yes, sir. <clears throat> Make a motion to take this to disciplinary hearings based on the alleged violations 18-37C6, 18-37C8, Florida Statute 489.1262A1, 18-37B, 9J, uh, subsequent Florida Statute 489.119 as amended, 18-37D 12B, uh, also Florida Statute 489.129 paren 1 paren M as amended. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to take Complaint 2208114COM to disciplinary hearing is approved. We'll now move to item nine, disciplinary hearings. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 9-1 is Matthew Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828-12001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220445COM. It's in regard to David Bryan, homeowner complainant at 2725 Blackwood Drive, Pensacola, Florida. At this time, um, if you are here to provide testimony in regard to this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. I'll go ahead and read from the administrative complaint. Petitioner is the Escambia County Contractor Competency Board authorized by the Escambia County Code of Ordinances to enforce the Florida Building Code, to regulate construction contractors, and to ensure compliance with the Escambia County Code of Ordinances and construction contractor certification requirements. Respondent is a state registered residential contractor, license number RR2828120001, licensed in Escambia County, Florida. Respondent's address of record with Escambia County Building Services Licensing Division is 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida 32534. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. David Bryan, homeowner, hired the respondent to remodel his master bathroom located at 2725 Blackwood Drive, Cantonment, Florida 32533. Homeowner executed a residential construction contract on July 31st, 2021 for a total renovation price of $19,200. On the same day, homeowner, homeowner paid to the respondent an initial payment of $9,100. The contract provided for a start date of October 8th, 2021. Work on the project commenced on November 1st, 2021 with wall demolition, plumbing, and concrete work. On December 23rd, 2021, homeowner emailed respondent and expressed displeasure with the service he was receiving and requested a meeting. A meeting between the homeowner and respondent was held in February, 2022. Homeowner filed a contractor complaint against the respondent on April 27th, 2022. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at his address of record via certified mail with return receipt requested. Respondent was not in attendance at the probable cause hearing on July 6, 2022. 
At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from Escambia County Building Services Department staff and the homeowner. The board also considered documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed the following. The homeowner hired the respondent to remodel his master bathroom. The homeowner provided a down payment to the respondent on July 31, 2021. Respondent did not include within his contract the required statement about the homeowner's recovery fund. Respondent did not obtain permitting for the project. Partial demolition for the project occurred on November 1, 2021. Concrete slab was cut and walls were opened to re reposition plumbing. Plumbing work was performed without permitting being obtained. Concrete was mixed within the residence for repair of the slab, exposing homeowner to raw concrete dust. Homeowner asked respondent, respondent for continual updates and expressed displeasure over the delays, and homeowner filed a complaint with the board after no further work was performed on the project. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe the respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837C11, Florida Statutes 489-126-2A1, Florida Statutes Section 49-126-2A2, Florida Statute Section 49-14251, and Escambia County Code of Section 1837-D14. Escambia County Code Section 1837-C11 provides that a code violation results from the fi following, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-C11 by failing to obtain the required permitting for the project. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837-C11 are as follows, a $100 to $5,000 fine and such other penalty is provided within Escambia County Code Section 1837. Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 provides that a code violation results from the following. Violating any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statutes Section 489-126-2A1 provides the following. A contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made. Respondent violated Florida Statute Section 489-126-2A1 by not applying for the appropriate permitting after receiving the initial payment from the homeowner. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute Section 489-126-2A1. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 are as follows. First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 provides that a code violation results from the following. Violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statute 489-126-2A2 provides the following. A contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must start the work within 90 days after the date all necessary permits for work, if any, are issued. Respondent violated for Statute 489-126-2A2 by failing to commence work on the project within 90 days after the issuance of the required permit. Accordingly, the respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 489-126-2A2. Penalty guidelines again for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 are as follows. First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. 
Again, Escambia County Code Section 1837D13C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes as amended. Florida Statute 4914251 provides the following. Each agreement or contract for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must contain a written statement explaining the consumer's rights under the recovery fund, except where the value of all labor and materials does not exceed $2,500. Respondent violated Florida Statute 4914251 by failing to notify homeowner of their rights under the recovery, homeowner recovery fund. Accordingly, respondent violated Eskimi County Code Section 1837D13C2 by violating Florida Statute 4891425. The penalty guidelines for violating Eskimi County Code Section 1837D13C2 are as follows. First violation, $502,000 fine, repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine, and suspension or revocation. Escambia County Code Section D14 provides that a code violation results from the following. Being found guilty of gross negligence, repeated negligence, or negligence resulting in significant danger to life or property. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837D14 by performing the mixing of concrete within the residence and exposing homeowner to raw concrete dust. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837D14 are as follows. First violation, $500 to $1,500 fine or repeat violation of $1,500 to $5,000 fine either includes suspension or revocation. And that is your administrative complaint. I believe um, the property owners are present. Mr. David Bryan, yes. Good morning, my name is David Bryan, 2725 Blackwood Drive, Cantona, Florida, 32533. Um, wow, it's a lot here. Um, I, I really, I think the main question I have is to make, or at least to make certain that I know that his license has already been revoked. I hope this is a permanent revocation and not a temporary, not a one year or five year. Um, we know that he's doing other type of work. He's actually doing on two streets down from us. Uh, he is still doing work. He had a contract with those people. Um, although the homeowner there says he's not doing contracted work, but he of course did have a contract. Um, Florida Statute 49.1425, talking about the, uh, the recovery fund, um, there is a shall issue $1,000 per, um, and that's a shall issue $1,000 fine per occurrence. Every, every contract that you've seen is a carbon copy of every other contract. He's never put that in, so I encourage you, any future complaints, you can just tack on the $1,000 to everyone. We know that he's in bankruptcy court. We know that's moving forward. Um, it's over $4 million is what he's, the Ponzi scheme that him and Lacoste have put together. Lacoste is going through the insurance side of it and Matt's doing the, the residential side. Um, it's all the same. Everything you've heard is the same. They take some money and like the same as said, there was never intention to work. There was never intention to work. Um, his only, the only work that he does is a little bit of demo, just, and then overcharges for that. Um, he, he really, asking for another draw, asking for another draw, substandard everything. Um, as I look back at this whole ordeal, it, it's incredible. The lack of character that Matt shows is, is, is beyond understanding. Um, I, ha I have a summary uh, because I did ask for restitution. I have a very quick summary of Matt's, I was going to say incompetence, but I think it's just as much impotence as anything else. And uh, that's for you, Matt, if you are listening. I hope that you are. Um, 11 no-shows since we had contracted with Matt. Uh, two plus months of a four by three foot hole left in the foundation through the concrete foundation. 
seven months of exposed insulation in the ceiling, plumbing work, not permitted, of course not inspected, obviously, in the wrong location. Uh, and I have pictures of all of this. You've seen this already before. Um, the bags of concrete that we mentioned too, there's a picture of the dust. That's as, as there, uh, no mitigation for dust. The door left open. Uh, partial framing of a knee wall and an abbreviated shower wall. Wrong location, wrong size, wrong material, and neither wall was ever secured to the foundation itself. Um, the design that they had done, completely wrong. The cabinets don't even match. That's also included in a previous complaint. Uh, so we've had two other contractors come in and look. Everything has to be redone except for the partial demo. That's it. Everything has to be done that he's done, except for the demo. And even the demo it clearly wasn't done. A contractor pointed out a few things that I didn't even notice. Scraping the ceiling wasn't complete. It just, it is, it's just, th this is a Ponzi scheme. It's what it always was. Come out, start, move to the next, move to the next, move to the next, move to the next. It's what he's done. It's MO. It's what he's going to continue to do. We are obviously looking for justice in the long run, and that's up to uh, the Department of Agriculture. And, and we all realize that. We all realize we're going to lose everything we've put in. Um, I have a friend of mine who's already given him $164,000. That's someone I work with, and uh, th that's one person. It's one. There's stories, Miss Amos. These stories, the community's full of them. They're nearly triple digits. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for helping and doing what you can do. We do appreciate it. Um, I think it was apparent to a lot of us where this was headed very early on. Um, I think the process, some type of streamlining this process. Jesse showed up today. That's amazing. I'm sure he just wanted to toot his own little horn, I suppose. Uh, I knew Matt wouldn't. He's certainly not man enough to show up for anything like this. He hasn't been here since June. He's certainly not going to show up again. Um, I think the process could be streamlined some way. I think scammers will always scam. People will follow Matt's lead and scam, and we'll build another scheme like this. And it's going to happen in Escambia County. It's happening now in Escambia County. When it's before you, gentlemen, please, when you begin to see it, let's find a way to put it on hold and say, what can we begin to do to slow this down, to stop it, and put an end to it? Scambia County citizens, we deserve some type of not protection from not protection from predators. There'll always be that, but some type of action taken when it's brought forth. So thank you again for your time. Thank you for your efforts. And um, any questions about restitution? I put forward some restitution information. Yeah. I'm available for any of that questions if you'd like to know. We need that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> we go back to the uh, looking at the counts and approving the counts. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Right now, I'm going to pass out um, y'all's assistance document. Yeah. It'll, it takes you through each count and. All right. Count one. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting? Do we need a discussion? 
No. Being none, let's go to motion phase. Yes, as to? The motion is I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in okay. violation gotcha. of code section 1837C11. Okay, I'll make the motion I'm, that we find the respondent to be violation of code section 18-37C11. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Unanimous, yes. As to count two, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code section 1837D13C2, is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1 of the Florida Statutes? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, this particular under under count two, um, when you depending on the decision of the of the board, there may be some additional information you need to receive regarding whether or not this has been a repeat violation. Okay, I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37D, 13C2. Sure, second. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none, unanimous, yes. As to count three, the alleged violation again of Eskimi County Code Section 1837D13C2, is there a finding that Mr. Banks again violated any provision of Chapter 489, Part, part 1, Florida Statute? Do we? And what I'm going to do, because each one of these references back to a separate Florida statute, I was going to say. the first one, and I knew that there would need to be clarification here, the first one was in regard to uh, Florida statute 49-126-2A1, and this one is in regard to Florida statute 49-126-2A2. The question I have at this point is if we, we're supposed to proceed to penalty phase after each one. Yeah, just to come, yes, we do the penalties at the end. Um, Can we do them at the end? Yes. Okay. And then uh, just to bring it to your attention, the language for that Florida statute is on your screen. Yeah. So count three, is there a finding that Mr. Yeah. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1, Florida Statutes in reference to 49-126-282? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37-D-13-C-2. Second. Motion made and seconded in the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none, yes. Unanimous. As to count four, the alleged violation again of Escambia County Code Section 1837D13C2 in regard to Florida Statute 489-14251, is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 49? And again, I'm, it is on your screen. Yeah, I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37D13C2. Second. Motion made and seconded. In the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, unanimous, yes. As to count five, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D14. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence resulting in significant danger to life or property? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of code section 18-37D14. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, unanimous, yes. All right. Go into penalty phase. <clears throat> yes, sir. I'm just glancing at to make sure that we um, know between a first violation and a, a repeat violation. I just wanna make sure. I think about... these are repeat violations. Yep, yeah. yep. So as to count one, the violation of code section 1837 C11, 
the penalty guidelines for violating Code Section 1837C11. It, um, a one hundred to five thousand dollar fine and such other penalty as allowed by law. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of five thousand dollars. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, what is? What uh, if council could tell us what is such other penalty as allowed by law, just for information's sake. Yeah, I have it up on your screen. Um, so at the very end of the administrative complaint, it talks about other possible penalties uh, to include suspension, revocation, um, probation, th those items. The count one doesn't have as much as the other counts. Look at count two. Right, but but I guess I'm following that with the next thing, Mr. Chairman, and that would be if... Here's my point. If we go to count two, you have a permanently revocated. That's Once what I'm fixing to ask. Has it been permanently rev revoked because he didn't make uh, his, the, my, his, my question? He's already, is, he already has a revoked uh, Because license. he didn't pay the fine. Is that yes. correct? So but it, under count one, we don't have that option. I, I, I follow you. I okay. told him to follow you. I'm just making sure. I understand. Just we'll just follow the procedure. We have a motion on the floor of five thousand dollar fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved. Move it to count two. As to count two, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2. In regard to Florida statute 489 126 2A1, um, the penalty guidelines are as follows. Now keep in mind, um, Mr. Banks was found in violation of this particular count previously, so this is a repeat violation. Um, Mr. Chairman, just to clarify, she has in front of her a copy of the previously signed um, orders and such, um, all done on June 1st. And, and she can read those into the record to uh, assist you as you make your decision as to whether or not this is a repeat violation. That's the decision before the board for you to make, but she can give you the information from the date that that was signed and what it related to. Oh, that's a repeat. To. Um, so the fines are a $500 to $1,000 fine for a first violation. Repeat violation is $1,000 to $5,000 fine. Uh, I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of $5,000 and the respondent's contractor's license be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motions approved. Unanimously. Count three. As to count three, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2 in regard to Florida statute 49126 2A2. The penalty guidelines for violating code section 1837 D13 C2. First violation, a $500 to $1,000 fine, or repeat violation, a $1,000 to $5,000 fine. Again, this is a repeat violation from a previous case back in June. Yeah. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine of $5,000 and that the contractor's license be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved. Count four. As to count four, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2 in regard to Florida statute 4914251, the penalty guidelines for violating code section 1837 D13 C2 are a first violation, $500 to $1,000 fine, repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine, and um, suspension or revocation. I make a motion that the respondent be agreed, be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of $5,000 and respondent's contractor's license be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved, approved unanimously. Count five. As to count five, the penalty guidelines for violating code section 1837 D14, this violation has not come before this board previously. So for a first violation is a $500 to $1,000 fine. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of $1,500 and the respondent's contractor's license $1, be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, yeah. the motion is approved. Keep in mind that we cannot specify a time limit under court order. So. But we can make a recommendation to the contractor licensing board. Correct, sir. We're about to get there. Um, a bankruptcy petition has been filed in the U.S. District Court. The board may order a penalty assessment but may not impose payment deadlines or enforce the order of fines while the bankruptcy case is pending. So just as an FYI. The board must also issue a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Restitution orders of the CB are not qualifying orders for the CILB funds reimbursement. At this time, you will need to make your recommendation for the CILB. Your recommendation may include a recommendation for no further action, a recommendation for suspension, revocation, restriction of the registration, a fine to be levied by the board, or a combination thereof. A recommendation for no further action means that the CILB will, no, will not take any further action. Question for Chair. Yes. Is the restitution hasn't been addressed in our this meeting yet? Has, is that correct? Yes, it has to be in this meeting. Yeah, but it hasn't been addressed in right. the violations. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. This would be that opportunity. I think to... the restitution is a part of the recommendation to the uh, contractor industry licensing board. In it. Just for clarification, at this point, and this has because of the bankruptcy court proceedings. You can order anything, you know, anything that's supported by the evidence. You can order it, but it cannot be enforced or imposed by this board. However, that um, that order can also be used by the individuals that they can take it um, and attach it when they file uh, with the bankruptcy court regarding their situation. But CI CILB will not accept the restitution order that we have as proof of the, ne the necessity to go into the recovery fund. So they'll have to take additional steps, such as the bankruptcy court. Order. That's outside of us, though. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure that yeah. people understand the order for restitution cannot be enforced at this yeah. point because of the bankruptcy, but it could be presented to the bankruptcy court. But can we go ahead and make an order to pay uh, restitution? Okay, can you bring up the dollar amount again? I think it was 15. Thank you. Th you got Thank that? you. That's what I was thinking. Go ahead. And, if you'd like to go ahead and make the motion. Yeah. To, I'd like what if, if you have an item on the board is your CILB recommendation your next item would be restitution okay yes recommend I can recommend take it to the CILB board would it yes so, but you have to say you what you want them to do we want them to uh, revoke his license permanently to revoke his license permanently <laughs> so your motion would be to recommend to the Construction Industry Licensing Board permanent revocation of the registration. Yes. Correct. Is second. There a second. Second. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, it's approved unanimously. And and so now, board, um, the complainant requested um, a look at possible restitution. I provided up on the screen their calculations. Yes. Mr. Mr. Chair, based on the review and the investigation, these are um, accurate numbers that you could recommend to us 
Is that correct? Somebody? <laughs> yes, these are the, the uh, documents that Mr. Bryan presented. Right. He actually, at the, his uh, probable cause hearing, he also presented those right. documents to the board. So based on that, I'd like to motion that we uh, give restitution to the Bryans in the amount of $15,444.47. Ordered it. I second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The motion for restitution is approved. Got some quick question. Uh, can uh, restitution be paid prior to fines? Can that be? Is that uh, in? How does that work? Since we're not in a position um, because of the bankruptcy, there can't be any court, there can't be any order by the board of when restitution has to be paid. Um, the bankruptcy court would be the one that's going to address how to handle the restitution and how to handle the fines. Yeah, I just don't make that decision. We can't. Do it. I, we can't. But that's would be the hope. That if that's your preferred method, there's no there's no problem with requesting yeah. that restitution be paid first. Yeah, I would hope that the uh, people needing restitution and getting that approved would get that paid prior to yes. prior to fines being paid. That's that we'll certainly that ends that one. Yeah. Item number two. Item two, Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 220670COM. It's in regard to Johnny Harris, homeowner complainant at 2568 Southern Oaks Drive, Pensacola, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony on this hearing, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Again, petitioner is the Escambia County Contractor Competency Board, authorized by the Escambia County Code of Ordinances to enforce the Florida Building Code, to regulate construction contractors, and to ensure compliance with the Escambia County Code of Ordinances and construction contractor certification requirements. Respondent is a state registered residential contractor. License number RR2828120001. Licensed in Escambia County, Florida. Respondent's address of record with the Escambia County Building Services Licensing Division is 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. Johnny Harris hired the respondent to remodel his bathroom located at 2568 Southern Oaks Drive, Cantonment, Florida, 32533. Homeowner executed a residential construction contract on July 24, 2021 for a total renovation price of $23,400. On the same day, homeowner paid a respondent an initial payment of $11,700. In November 2021, work on the project commenced on demolition, plumbing, and concrete work. In January 2022, homeowner contacted Escambia County Building Services to discuss issues with the work performed by the respondent and learned that no permits have been obtained for the project. In February 2022, homeowner contacted respondent and requested an itemized detail of expenses for the project and a refund of his deposit less expenses. Homeowner and respondent came to an agreement on March 11, 2022 for a refund in the amount of $8,000 with a contingency of Mr. Harris taking no further action. Homeowner filed a complaint with the board on May 3, 2022 against the respondent after no refund was received. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, 32534 via certified mail with return receipt requested. Respondent was not in attendance at the probable cause hearing on July 6, 2022. At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from Escambia County Building Services Department staff and homeowner. 
The board also considered the documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed that the homeowner hired the respondent to remodel his bathroom. The homeowner provided a down payment to the respondent on July 24, 2021. Respondent did not obtain permitting for the project. Partial demolition for the project occurred in November 2021. Concrete slab was cut and walls opened to reposition plumbing. Plumbing work was performed without permitting being obtained. Concrete was mixed within the residence for repair of the slab, exposing homeowner to raw concrete dust. Homeowner discovered that no permitting for the project had been obtained by the respondent. Homeowner asked respondent for an itemized detail of expenses and a refund of the deposit less expenses. Homeowner and respondent agreed to a refund amount of $8,000 and homeowner has not received a refund from the respondent to date. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe that respondent violated Skimmy County Code Section 1837 C11, Florida Statute 49-126-2A1, Florida Statute 49-126-2A2, Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10, and Escambia County Code Section 1837 D14. Escambia County Code Section 1837 C11 provides that a code violation results from finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit, deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837 C11 by failing to obtain the required permitting for the project. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837 C11, a $100 to $5,000 fine, and such other penalty is provided within Escambia County Code Section 1837. Escambia County Code Section 1837 D13 C2 provides that a code violation results from the following, a violation of any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1, Florida Statutes. Florida Statute 49-126-2A1 provides the following, a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made. Respondent violated Florida Statute 49-126-2A1 by not applying for the appropriate permitting after receiving the initial payment from the homeowner. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 49-126-2A1. The penalty guidelines for violating Iskimi County Code Section 1837 D13 C2, first violation, $500 to $1,000 fine, repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine, and suspension or revocation. Again, Iskimi County Code Section 1837 D13 C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes. Florida Statute 49-126-2A2, a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must start the work within 90 days after date of all necessary permits for work, if any, are issued. Respondent violated Florida Statute 49-126-2A2 by failing to commence work on the project within 90 days after issuance of required permitting. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 49-126-2A2. Penalty guidelines again for Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2. First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10 provides that a code violation results from the following. Abandonment. Respondent violated the Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10 by failing to return to the construction project for a period in excess of 90 days from January 22, 2022 until present. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10 First violation, $500 I mean to $2,000 fine, repeat violation, $5,000 fine, and revocation. 
Escambia County Code Section 1837 D14 provides that a code violation results from the following being found guilty of gross negligence, repeated negligence, or negligence resulting in the significant danger to life or property. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837 D14 by performing the mixing of concrete within the residence and exposing homeowner to raw concrete dust. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837 D14 First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine or repeat violation, $1,500 to $5,000 fine. Either violation includes suspension or revocation. Mr. Harris is present. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were going to tell me, okay, you can go ahead. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I was just well, I wanted to put out that um, I had to pull permits myself. I found my workers myself. Uh, I had to go through Lowe's and uh, get my own flooring and do the whole thing myself. I did everything myself in order for me to get the work done. The rip out was done. Um, some electrical wires were pulled. There was no electrical work that required permits, but they did pull wires to put in fixtures and those was left blank. Uh, the concrete was torn, uh, there was dirt piled up in my shower, if you want to call it that, it wasn't a shower, um, and there was uh, just piping and dust everywhere, so I had to have somebody come in and fix all that up. Um, I'm, I'm just here today because I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get restitution for this. I, I tried to uh, talk with Matthew Banks. Uh, we went through three promissory notes. Um, those promissory notes was sent out, the last promissory note that I received was sent out on, I'm sorry, old man eyes, um, was sent out on March 11, 2022. Uh, we had agreed to $8,000, but he had uh, stole 11700 from me. Um, I agreed, I talked with him and said, hey man, $8,000 is, is good because you had guys come in and do a rip out and um, they need to get paid. They don't know about what you're doing. Just pay them and just pay me $8,000. He agreed after that I didn't hear anything back from him, um, from his lawyer, Alana Gay. I think that was her name. Um, when I added everything up, if I was gonna add in the permit, uh, without the permit, it's $9,956 25 cents but with the permit is ten thousand sixty three dollars and twenty five cents um, I really don't know what else to say except for um, I'm not trying to tell the board what to do but there needs to be a way that we can actually look at something and say hey this guy's being investigated for this so you might want to think about it if you want to put him on a project there should be something I can go online and look at, something I can come up here and take a look at and say, oh, okay. Oh, look, Matthews Banks, he's under investigation. Oh, don't wanna use that guy, let me move on to the next one. Okay, so something needs to be done uh, to help out the consumer so we don't get railroaded in the end, hopefully. I think uh, I think a lot of that's underway. Okay, I really yeah, appreciate yeah. that. You have to understand, it's not the board. <laughs> right, I know. I know. It's I know a it's building not, official. Yeah. It's the county. Yeah. It's always the man <laughs> next to the man. So, or the woman next to the woman. Uh, thank you. So, but uh, I just want to make sure that um, that myself and the individuals that also been railroaded by this guy that um, that they can get some form of restitution or something because this just shouldn't have been even taken to this extreme. Yeah. So, but I appreciate you guys for your time and. Um, if he has to see jail time, then that's his problem. That's not mine. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to see restitution. Okay. I appreciate Do you that. have your list of uh, amounts? Yeah. yeah. He, I have the the receipt that he gave me for the eleven thousand seven hundred dollars that he gave me. That should be. That should be enough. It's in there. It's, okay. so it's, it's up on your screen now. That's yep. That's what I need. That's what you want. Yeah. That's okay. What I want. That should be a, that should be evidence enough. Okay. 
Thank you, sir. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. You got another list? Yes, sir. I didn't have your assistance document. Chairman Matthews, um, yes. um, in the original, uh, in the administrative complaint, there's paper, there's a statement uh, where they had agreed to a refund amount of $8,000. Um, for the purposes of determining restitution, you may want to have some, some specific uh, testimony from Mr. Harris regarding that, why they had that agreement and why it's different than the amount he paid. He, he spoke to the $8,000 was a... Was an agreement. Say no. If 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 certain things were happening, he would take eight thousand of okay. the amount of money. So I'm assuming that the because neither party were paid, that's what the restitution amount was. Can you verify that for me, please? No. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much what it was. That's not pretty much what it was. That's what it was. I said, hey, just pay me eight thousand, and you can go your way. I go my way. Uh, he agreed in three promissory notes. Uh, the first two promissory notes, there was just some, some wording I didn't like. And I said, hey, I need another promissory note with my name and address on it. And he, he was like, okay. So he sent me back another promissory note. After that, I didn't hear anything else from him. Well, the, the 8000 that was mentioned as to what you were to be paid, yes, that was also that he was going to pay the workers the difference. Between right. what you're requesting for restitution, right? It was so eleven thousand seven hundred dollars that I paid him, minus eight. The eight thousand he's going to give me, the rest was for his workers. For and the he never paid either one. I I have no idea if he didn't pay his workers or not. He didn't pay me. I know that. Yeah. He didn't pay anybody. So the is that clear, counsel? That I'm not sure about his workers. No. I, and there was um, uh, no offset. There was no offset as far as him, his doing work on at your location. You know, they did. They did a rip out uh, right when I started. My my hair is on the back of my neck. Started standing up. I had to talk with Melissa Reba and say, "Hey, is this will be pulling permits for this?" And she said, "The only permit I got from you is your roof." And I was like, "Is this supposed to be having permits pulled?" She was like, uh, "Yeah, if they tore up your concrete, that's supposed to be a permit." So right when I got that, I said, hey, guys, let's let's stop work, and um, I need you guys to pull some permits. After that, I got no word from them. We started this back and forth. I said, I'll tell you what, just stop work, give me my money back, and we're good. After I didn't get the money back, then I said, okay, I'll tell you what, just pay me 8000 because you guys did do a rip out. But you didn't get that either? I didn't get that either. So you would just have to make a determination if there was any value of the of the rip out and whether eight thousand dollars of the eleven thousand seven hundred full refund um, is supported by the evidence in the case for restitution purposes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> That's it. To, to get, a, Mr. Chair, to get a value of the rip out, do we know what was done? How, how much rip out to get a value? Um, if that needs to come off of the 11-7 to be in compliance. The floors was ripped up. The uh, the bathtub was torn out. The uh, the concrete was jackhammered. Uh, all the the tile, some drywall was pulled down. Um, they there are photographs on the screen. Yeah, I have photographs. That was the out. So I think the question is the eight thousand he believed he is owed. The other money was to go to the workers that never got paid. So right. I think the restitution we'd have to do is eight thousand. Yeah. And unless the other well, when I, are you, I, have you got a lien or anything against your property? By no, the other okay. No. What, okay. I, I immediately uh, started calling workers up. Started trying to get things done because my wife would have killed me if I wouldn't have, because we only had one bathroom in the house. And um, that was the concrete rip out, and that's when he put it back, and he didn't do it correctly. The, uh, the 
piping that the that the plumber put in. I, I don't remember exactly, um, but when it went down, he didn't put a what I can refer to as a, a joint. He didn't put the right joints in the P traps on the inside. P trap. So, and um, they did it up to that point, and that's when I stopped them. Because that's when I figured out they were supposed to have a permit for that, and they didn't have a permit to, to do that. I don't think they need a permit to do a rip out unless they're tearing down a whole wall. It's yeah, they didn't tear. They didn't tear down a wall. They just took drywall off the off the extensions. It depends on the scope of work. How much drywall was removed? I mean, if you're doing a minor repair, then no. But it, we would need a scope of work. Okay. Well. He took down a lot of he took down a lot of the drywall as you can see inside the picture, and um, but when he started jackhammering, that's when it got me a little scared because I was like, they gonna hit a pipe, my whole house is gonna flood out. <laughs> so. So for the record, you have the photographs before you. Um, you can make that determination based on the photographs and based on the testimony whether or not eleven thousand seven hundred dollars is the full restitution amount. Or if you believe it to be a, rest, uh, a lesser amount, you can base that on what you have in front of you. It doesn't okay. just have to be the 8,000 agreed upon. It can be based on the evidence in front of you. Uh, I'm sorry, may yeah. I say something too? I'm sorry, I don't mean to interject. Uh, Matt was very adamant to us in the very beginning. This is very similar. It's a master bath. It, it looks almost like our room. Matt was very adamant. He said this repeatedly. Standard, this is what he charged. Standard demolition, $600 per room. That's why in our restitution amount, you'll see is 8,600 because he responded in the email that I said partial demo because he never finished. So I said, well, how about $500? I mean, you're two hours from finishing. But his standard demo, that work right there looks eerily similar to ours and it's a standard, Matt's standard fee was $600. So I think a fair demo, according to Matt, it would be $600. And, and one thing that I was looking at was his workers who did the rip, the rip out. I was like, those guys got to get paid. They don't, you know, I was just trying to be fair. For the record, um, that was Mr. Bryan yeah. that spoke on behalf of the, um, in, in the case, yeah. you can certainly consider, he was sworn and he's yeah. uh, still sworn. Yeah. Um, and you can consider his information if he had a conversation yeah. with Mr. Banks. Mr. Matthews, may I? May I? Yeah. I appreciate all the people. Yeah, speaking. go ahead, please. Please state your name for the record. Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Bobolus. This is just a question to ask. The work on the demo was not permitted, correct? Is that correct? Correct. Then why does he owe any money? Because technically the work wasn't done. It wasn't permitted. If you don't permit your work, you don't have any right to collect on that. It seems to me that it's a moot point. If he didn't pull any permitting, the work wasn't done. Did you derive any value out of that eleven thousand seven hundred dollars? <laughs> did I did I get any value out of eleven right. thousand? No. Okay, thank you. The way I look at it, you paid for something you didn't get. That I didn't get. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good. We're good. <laughs> You want to go ahead? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so we're going to go through your um, possible the, the violations and the penalties. So as to count one, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 C11, is there a finding that Mr. Banks is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency, or misconduct in the practice of contracting? Make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37C11. Second. second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Unanimous yes. Count two, uh, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837D13C2 in reference to Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. Uh, is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1? And that is up on your screen now. I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37D, 13C2. Do you have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Yes. Unanimous. 
as to count three, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code section 1837 D13C2 in regard to Florida Statute 489-126-282. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 489 Part 1 Florida Statutes? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37 D13C2. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being done. Unanimous yes. As to count four, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks abandoned the construction project? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 1837 D10. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. Unanimous yes. As to count five, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D14. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence resulting in significant danger to life or property? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37 D14. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none. Unanimous yes. We're moving on to the penalty phase for those violations. As to count one, the violation of code section 1837 C11, the penalty guideline for violating code section 1837 C11, a $100 to $5,000 fine and such other penalty as allowed by law. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of $5,000. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Unanimous yes. As to count two, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2 in regard to Florida statute 489-126-2A1. Penalty guidelines for violate, violating code section 1837 D13 C2, a first violation, $500 to $1,000 fine, a repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine, I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine of $5,000 and respondent's contractor's license be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, unanimous yes. As to count three, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2 in regard to Florida statute 489-126-2A2. Penalty guidelines, first violation, $500 to $1,000 fine, Sec, uh, repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine, and suspension or revocation. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine of $5,000 and respondent's contractor's license be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion passes. Unanimous yes. As to count four, the violation of code section 1837 D10, the penalty guidelines, a first violation, $500 to $2,000 fine. Do we have this a repeat? First? He, he has not previously been found in violation. Okay. I make a motion to the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of $2,000. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion is approved for $2,000. As to count five, the violation of code section 1837 D14, a first violation of $500 to $1,500 fine. I'll and, make a, and two. And suspension or revocate, re, revocation. Okay, but this is not a repeat violation. The first time we had that before the board is today during uh, the pre the the okay. other hearings that were held today. So I, I wouldn't think that that would qualify as a repeat. Thank you. Thank you. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of fifteen hundred dollars, and the respondent uh, respondent contractor's license be permanently revoked. Second. 
Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved for $1,500 and permanently revoked license. Again, a bankruptcy petition has been filed in the U.S. District Court. The board may order a penalty assessment, but may not impose payment deadlines or enforce the order of the fines while the bankruptcy case is pending. The board must also issue a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Restitution orders of the CCB are not qualifying orders for the CILB refunds reimbursement. This recommended penalty may include a recommendation for no further action, a recommendation for suspension, revocation, restriction of the revocation, or a fine to be levied by the board, or a combination thereof. A recommendation of no further action means the CILB will not take any further action. Can I remind Please. the board that if you're making recommendations, they need to be into the microphone so that the, the people can hear what's being okay. said? I make a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board seek restitution orders of the CCB and uh, fund reimbursements. Is that sufficient? Uh, restitution would be determined at a, at a different, this is just your recommendation to the CILB. Yeah. It's up on your screen I'm now. Sorry, just to clarify because I'm kind of looking at the verbiage I've been handed and it's going to throw them off what the recommendation should right. be. So in your administrative complaint, your recommendation mm -hmm. for the CILB may include a recommendation for no further action, a recommendation for suspension, revocation, restriction of the respondent's registration, or a fine to be levied by the CL CILB. Or you can ask for both. Yeah. You can ask for a combination of a, of a any of those suspension, revocations, or restrictions, um, and a fine, if you would like. Anybody else want to take a shot at that? <laughs> I mean, Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm we motion that we send a recommendation to the CILB for the revoking of his license with a fine of $4.7 million. <laughs> Um, I believe that is beyond there. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I was <clears throat> my throat messed up. Um, I would have to pull the CILB record, but I'm pretty sure that goes beyond their ability to, to impose a fine. Um, you could ask that they impose, uh, uh, if you give me a minute, I'll look you up a number. Um, or you Thank can you. just impose, ask them to impose a fine that is um, at their discretion in, in compliance with the law. And to impose a fine as in compliance with the law. Right, as they determine. And as they determine yeah. compliance with the law. Second. And permanent license revoking. And I did say the revoking of his license and the fine as they determine to be ap applicable within the law. That's our recommendation. Second. <laughs> we done on this one? One more. Are we? Yeah, but where do we do the restitution? Yes, there was a request for restitution. Um, there has has been some numbers provided. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. there's a motion on the board that has not been voted on. What's that? I made the motion to do for the CILB. It was seconded, but there was never voted on. Okay. All those in favor of the proposed motion to. Recommendation to the CILB. Is there a second? Yes, yeah, second. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Can make a me motion recommending restitution of eleven thousand seven hundred dollars be paid. Motion. Second. Second. All second. Okay. In the discussion, being done. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion for restitution of eleven thousand seven hundred dollars. Yes. Be approved. Is approved. One more. Chair, if you could give me just a couple of minutes. Okay. Just um, a and while she's gone, I can I can inform the the board of the 
normal penalty ranges. They vary depending on the violation of which section it is they find a violation of. So that may be your best bet is to say in compliance with the law because sometimes it's a revocation in $5,000 fine. In some instances, depending on whether or not there's a criminal conviction, it varies. So that, uh, so if they would just work in compliance with their, their own restrictions, that's probably not a bad idea. Thank you. I wish we could. We're on a five minute break. Uh, we can put you out there on a, with a bucket. Sorry, but my mind is totally gone on that mask deal. Okay, so someone else is going to have to make that known. Okay, we back.
give one more to him. Back in session. Item three. Nine three. Item nine three. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction LLC, State Registered License Number RR2828120001. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 220671 COM. It's in regard to Jennifer Grant, the homeowner complainant at 6065 Huntington Creek Circle, Pensacola, Florida. If you are here to provide testimony in regard to this case, if you could please stand and be sworn in. Thomas, for the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Are, are you wanting to speak? Oh, okay. Yes, please. Chair. What? I, th I think she was wanting to speak. Is it in regard to this hearing? Okay, I'm going to read the administrative complaint and then we'll go with the speakers. All right. All right. Petitioner is the Escambia County Contractor Competency Board authorized by the Escambia County Code of Ordinances to enforce the Florida Building Code to regulate construction contractors and to ensure compliance with the Escambia County Code of Ordinances and construction contractor certification requirements. Respondent is a state registered residential contractor license number RR2828-12001 licensed in Escambia County, Florida. Respondent's address of record with Escambia County Building Services Licensing Division is 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida 32534. Respondent is subject to regulation by the board. Jennifer Grant hired the respondent to construct an addition to her home located at 6065 Huntington Creek Circle, Pensacola, Florida 32526. Homeowner executed a residential construction contract on January 27, 2022 for a total project price of $106,550 with a required start date within six weeks. On the same day, homeowner paid to respondent an initial payment of $53,275. On May 3rd, after no work commenced, homeowner contacted the respondent to terminate the contract. Homeowner filed a complaint against the respondent on May 4th, 2022 with the board. Notice of the probable cause hearing was sent to the respondent at 10370 Pensacola Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida 32534 via certified mail with return receipt requested. Respondent was not in attendance at the probable cause hearing on July 6th, 2022. At the probable cause hearing, the board heard testimony from Escambia County Building Services Department staff and homeowner. The board also considered documentary evidence pertinent to the issues. The testimony and evidence showed that the homeowner hired the respondent to construct an addition. The homeowner provided a down payment to the respondent on January 27, 2022. Work never commenced on the project. The homeowner terminated the contract and requested a complete refund of the down payment. Respondent offered the homeowner a payment plan for the refund of the down payment. Respondent declined the payment plan and requested the refund to be paid in full, and the homeowner has not received a refund from the respondent to date. The board determined that there was probable cause to believe respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-C11, Florida Statute 489-126-2A1, Florida Statute 489-126-2A2, and Escambia County Code Section 1837-D10. Escambia County Code Section 1837-C11 
provides that a violation results from the following, finding that a contractor is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837 C11 by failing to commence the construction project within the required time frame detailed in the contract. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837 C11 a $100 to $5,000 fine, and such other penalty as provided within Escambia County Code Section 1837. Escambia County Code Section 1837, D13, C2, provides that a code violation results from a violation of any provision of Chapter 489, Part 1, Florida Statutes. Florida Statute 489-126-2A1 provides a contractor who receives an initial payment, money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property, must apply for permits necessary to do work within 30 days after the date payment is made. Respondent violated Florida Statute 49-126-2A1 by not applying for the appropriate permitting after receiving the initial payment from the homeowner. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 49-126-2A1. Penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. Escambia County Code Section 1837 D13 C2 provides that a code violation results from violation of any provision of 489 Part 1 Florida Statutes. Florida Statute 49-126-2A2 provides a contractor who receives as initial payment money totaling more than 10% of the contract price for repair, restoration, improvement, or construction to residential real property must start the work within 90 days after, after the date all necessary permits for work, if any, are issued. Respondent violated Florida Statute 49-126-2A2 by failing to commence work on the project within 90 days after issuance of required permitting. Accordingly, respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 by violating Florida Statute 49-126-2A2. The penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837-D13-C2 First violation, $500 to $1,000 fine. Repeat violation, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10 provides that a code violation results from abandonment. Respondent violated Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10 by failing to commence work on the construction project. Penalty guidelines for violating Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10 First violation, $500 to $2,000 fine, repeat violation, revocation, and a $5,000 fine. Ms. Grant? Ms. Pina? Thank you, Melissa Pino. Oh, I need one for myself. Thank God. <clears throat> Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Bobless, and I just wanted to let people know that I did, um, I'm not do, pouncing on this to be rude. I asked Ms. Grant if she would prefer that I go first, or she did. And this isn't something that um, I'm asking to be admitted. This is just purely a courtesy copy, and it does pertain um, for, for reasons that I'll mention in a moment. Um, this is a Facebook post that Matt Banks, oh, y'all, please make sure that the empty chair has one left on his chair as well. It gets more like Doug Underhill every day. Um, this is a post that was made in response to Ms. Grant having the audacity to post about how she was robbed, because that's what this is. It's just pure thievery. Um, Mr. Banks came on her Facebook 
page, and I'm going to read this, and I'm going to explain why I do think it pertains as you gentlemen go to make your rulings. It's very hard for you gentlemen to understand what it's like being a woman dealing with this. In times past, sometimes you guys haven't been all that nice to women that have been coming before you. And being a longtime advocate of the county, I'm, and, and I'm not talking about today, you guys are, you know, it's a beautiful job today and everyone is so grateful for it. But there's the she crazy routine you gotta deal with and then there's just the fear of harm. Now, that's not to say that men can't fear the same thing, but when Ms. Grant gets up, I hope that you will make maximum allowance for her being understandably very nervous and scared to be here today. So please take that in mind as she offers her testimony. I'm just going to, to read this, and, and if the board does think that it pertains, Ms. Grant does have more official copies of this, and she also has the complaint that she filed with the state's attorney's office, who, to the best of my understanding, has not done anything with it. So this is what Matt Do Banks... Can, can I ask you a quick question? Please. Are you saying we've been disrespectful to anybody based on... I don't want to, uh, you know what, I'm going to speak to item 10, uh, and, and, and that's going to have a little bit to do with that then. But I've, just for context, for those of you who aren't aware, Mr. Bell, I've been on this issue for three years um, since Terry Knox. But I cases. have never disrespected anybody. That's well, let's not, I don't want to distract from okay. Ms. Grant because what well, I'm pleading. I just want to go on record that that is not the case. Thank you. So here is Mr. Banks's post that he made directly to Ms. Grant. Do something then. Come see me. I'm easy to find. Screenshot that. Keep messing with my family and I'll educate you. Now, keep in mind, Ms. Grant didn't say anything about his family. This is all the game they play where they pretend to be victims, just like Mr. Lacoste earlier tried to pretend like the, that polite gentleman's emails were threatening in some manner. You have issues with Banks Construction LLC, then attack the business. I'm done being threatened when you don't know shit. Professionalism out the window. You want to involve my family. I'll make yours miss you. I'll make yours miss you. And then in case she didn't understand that she was being directly threatened with bodily harm, he reinforces it. This is my warning. Please understand it. LOL all you want, do your research in depth before you threaten someone like me. I'm not the Karen or Jeffrey you argue with online. Address me or my family in public and I will react. That's a guarantee. And then always with these bullies, their little passive aggressive sign off, have a good day. Not everybody chooses to be crazy like me and other public advocates and put ourselves in the line of fire by very powerful people. And these guys are backed by some pretty powerful people. Everyone coming is so brave to be doing this because they all know what's going on here. A woman who's been threatened publicly having to stand before you guys when she knows this guy is watching Please give her maximum support when she's here to offer her testimony today. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Grant. My address is 6065 Huntington Creek Circle, uh, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. As was stated, I contracted with Matt to build an addition on my home for my elderly mother after my father passed away. Um, I gave him $53,275 down. He said that was for permits, for blueprints, um, for materials that had to be custom ordered specific to my job. Um, I didn't think anything of him asking 50% down because every contractor I have dealt with since I bought my home and still to this day ask for 50% down. I just had carpeting put in, they wanted 50% down. That seems to be the, the thing. He left my house within one hour and cashed my check. And I have never seen him since. 
no return phone calls, no return text until I told him I was filing here. He said, oh, well, we'll come up with a payment plan. I'll give you a third in 90 days and a third in 120 days. And if I don't want, I knew how that turns out from other people getting payment plans and they never come. So I was like, no, I just want it all at once. And he sent a text, said, no problem, I'll get it to you. That's the last text I got from him. So he's filed bankruptcy. And of course, y'all all know, not all the victims are listed on the bankruptcy because Matt can't seem to find all of his contracts, can't remember all the money he's taken. But as of right now listed on his bankruptcy, it's $4.7 million from victims. And it will go up because, I, like I said, not all the victims are listed yet. Um, I've met a couple here today that aren't even on there. So $4.7 million, that's a lot of money. The Victims Recovery Fund that everyone keeps talking about is capped at $500,000 per contractor. Do the math, $4.7 million right now is owed to victims. We're going after a recovery fund that's only worth $500,000. So we're all gonna fight over who's gonna get to it first? It, it's worthless to us. Plus, you have one year from the date of complaint to get your work done, paid for, inspected, before you can even apply to the fund. People who have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars don't have the money to get the work done. So they never can apply. So the recovery funds is useless to us. And even more so that he's filed bankruptcy. Because now we have to wait for the bankruptcy to discharge or end. Well, we filed our complaint. If that goes on for two years, our year's up. So for Jeff Bragosh and everyone that's coming on TV saying, oh, just send them to the recovery fund, that's, that's, that's useless to us. He filed bankruptcy. He's out still working, doing his thing, and people's lives are destroyed. So I would like to know, I would like to ask for restitution. What good that does, I don't know but I would like to ask for it. And then I'd like you to explain the policy and procedure of our final orders and who prepares those and how we get those. Your final orders? Like the final order, like when you order restitution, like who prepares that and you know, how does that happen? I mean, do we get something in writing saying that you... We referred it to the secretary? So yes, you do. So once they have made their final determination, let's just take these that they've already made a determination on. We take that back. We draft a final order. It goes to the legal department for review. Uh, that gets signed off by the chairman and it goes to not only yourself, of course the respondent gets it via two methods and then also to the state. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I would like to request restitution. Like I said, what good that does, I don't know. but. I would like to request that since he took my money and apparently spent it the same day he got it. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Sorry you having to go through all this. That's her restitution. That was her proof of payment. Yeah. I just brought it up for whenever y'all are yeah. ready. Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and pass out your assistance okay. sheets. All right. As to count one, the alleged violation of Eskimi County Code Section 1837C11, is there a finding that Mr. Banks is guilty of fraud or deceit or gross negligence, incompetency or misconduct in the practice of contracting? I'll make a motion that we find. Oops, sorry about that. I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of code section 18-37C11. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like side being none. Unanimous, yes.
as to count to the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D13C2 in reference to Florida Statute 489-126-2A1. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1, Florida Statute? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37 D13C2. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being done, unanimous yes. As to count three, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D13C2 in reference to Florida Statute 49-126-2A2. Is there a finding that Mr. Banks violated any provision of Chapter 49, Part 1, Florida Statute? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37D, 13C2. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say yes. Aye. 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 Yes. It's okay. <laughs> Opposed? As no. Unanimous? Yes. As to count four, the alleged violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837 D10, is there a finding that Mr. Banks abandoned the construction project? I make a motion that we find the respondent to be in violation of Code Section 18-37 D10. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being done, unanimous, yes. As to count one, the violation of code section 1837 C11, penalty guidelines, a $100 to $5,000 fine, and such other penalty as allowed by law. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay the fine in the amount of $5,000. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion passes. As to count two, the violation of code section 1837 D13 C2. The penalty guidelines, a $1,000 to $5,000 fine. I make a motion. And is, there is there a second? second? Is there a second? And it goes on to say, and suspension or revocation. Okay, but there is no, this is the first violation. Okay. Is it the first violation? No, sir. He was previously at a... Okay. Thank you. Right. I'm sorry. I was That's confused right. as to what you were asking, Mr. Right. Bell. That's all right. A motion... <laughs> I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay the fine in the amount of $5,000 and the respondent's contractor license be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Big none. The motion passes. As to count three, the violation of code section 1837 D13C2 in regard to Florida Statute 49126-2A2. Penalty guidelines, uh, $1,000 to $5,000 fine and suspension or revocation. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of $5,000 and the respondent's <coughs> contractor's license be permanently revoked. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion passes. As to count four, the violation of code section 1837 D10, penalty guidelines, um, $500 to $2,000 fine. Is it, this is a repeat violation? No. It is not. Okay. I make a motion that the respondent be ordered to pay a fine in the amount of $2,000. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion passes. Okay, again, a bankruptcy petition has been filed in the U.S. District Court. The board may order a penalty assessment, but may not impose payment deadlines or enforce the order of fines while the bankruptcy case is pending. Um, at this time, the board must also issue a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board. Um, restitution orders of the CCB are not qualifying orders for the CILB funds reimbursement. This recommended penalty to the Construction Industry Licensing Board may include a recommendation for no further action, a recommendation for suspension, revocation, restriction of the registration, or a fine to be levied by the board, or a combination thereof. Again, a recommendation for no further action means the CILB will not take action. 
and I have it up on your screen. Mr. Chair, I move that we send a recommendation to the CILB for the revoking of his license along with a fine to be levied as according to their regulations. Second. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Being none, motion passes. The complainant also put in a request for restitution. <clears throat> Make a motion that the plaintiff receive restitution of $53,275. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion passes. All right, Mr. Chairman. We have done. one more item on our agenda. And that's item 10. September business. Uh, new business is the election of chair and vice chair. Yes, if you would like to address the board in regard to this item, just raise your hand. Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Boblets, known from some corners as the sewing circle. Sewing circles here. Um, Mr. Bell, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to be rude and not respond to your question. I just realized that I had made the mistake of getting a field from Ms. Banks's item and I didn't want to take us down a rabbit trail to distract from her cause. Three years, sometimes daily, I've been involved as an advocate on these contractor issues. Mr. Lacoste and Mr. Banks are unfortunate newcomers relatively to the scene. And I started working on this back when y'all were here in Terry Knox cases, which I very well understand should not have ever come before this board. Um, and I should back up and say thank you so much for today. And I can't imagine how much better all of this would have gone from the very beginning if there had been a recognition of the enormity of the problem. But of course, since there wasn't when Terry came and because the state's attorney did not execute the warrant on the probable cause filing from the Department of Ag, there's nothing you gentlemen can do about that. And that's the same thing that I've said to the BCC when I've been addressing them. And I don't say this to be aggressive or rude or mean. My thing at the county, my advocacy is I stand up and say the thing that oftentimes nobody else will. And I have been down there at that meeting advocating them for, to take a look at the contractor competency board. Good people, okay? Nobody's, nobody's saying that there's any bad will intentions, but Unfortunately, this board and some members of it are, I'll say some members of it, a particular member, is a disgrace, not only to the process here. Um, if you're not, if you don't believe in permits and licensing and regulation and you can't keep your butt in a chair while women cry because their lives have been destroyed, again, you guys can't self-regulate each other, but it is the moment for, for new leadership. And um, I don't even know if he wants it. I hope that you'll consider Mr. Lister. He's probably hating me right now for saying it, but, and Mr. Matthews, um, and again, I don't say this to be rude, and I do say it with due respect. As I said down at the BOCC meeting, the reporting on WEAR when you were interviewed was a disaster. There doesn't seem yet, maybe today, now maybe finally today, there's some sense of the enormity, but you said earlier in the meeting that it's not, it's not the contractor competency board. It's not on us. State's attorney's office says it's not on us. The BOCC says it's not on us. Buildings say it's not on us. Department of Ag tried to do their job and, and it couldn't get done, but there has been chaos at some of these meetings on Terry Knox hearings, she went and paid for transcripts of every single hearing, whether they should have been heard or not. 
The conduct there is in black and white. I've read all of the transcripts, even though I wasn't here at the meeting. You gentlemen have not exercised all the powers you have. So this is what I said, Mr. Matthews. You said, we just don't have enough power. You guys could be subpoenaing stuff all along. There's so many things more you, you could be doing. Uh, and I will say, I understand you haven't violated any laws with the way this crazy due process thing it has set, has been set up. So I'm not, I'm not you know, saying that. I do think that back with Ms. Uh, Knox hearings when she came to the BOCC and asked for an investigation of financial conflict during those hearings, that should have taken place because at least one of you had financial conflict during that hearing, flipped a house with the contractor that was under investigation for probable cause at that time. I think some of that is just not a, it's a recognition of, there's, there just doesn't seem to have been a lot of rigor previously, but I do hope either Mr. Matthews, if you've got a newfound understanding of how serious all of this stuff is, you know, you guys, Oh, it's a volunteer board. Well, you do get paid, and you are proxies in a quasi-judicial setting that's answerable to the first district court. I wish that Mr. Lister would, would, I don't even know if he wants it, but he really made a lot of sense when he talked to the press, and he seems to have been like really taking a role of leading and making motions that need to be made. Perhaps you'll consider him or Mr. Matthews. I, I would love to hear if you really still still want this. What what you think needs needs to change? Um, I don't think it's having more power. Maybe it's being aware of how much power you actually hold and and being willing to do it and the last thing i'll leave it with is the curiosity that all of us have is why aren't you guys turning all of these over to the state's attorney's office hey, are they all all being turned over they are now okay yeah, that's well, and, and, that's and really the, good because people didn't know that and that was even asked in one of the meetings i asked has this been turned to the state's attorney okay because good. these things have to go that route this takes so long because of the process it needs to be law enforcement needs to step in at this place and being a victim, your lips to God's ears. Being a victim of this myself back in the day, of a certain contractor did the same thing. I have a lot of empathy for these people, and that's why I'm here. So I have been a victim. We get four dollars a month in restitution from oh. the from the restitution. Board. Oh, from your personal circumstances. Yes. You mean. Understood. I'm a victim of a quarter of a million dollar lawsuit for speaking the truth about something that the case got dropped before it ever went to proceedings. So I understand what it can be like getting caught up in these kinds of circumstances, but I just hopefully there's some renewed. And again, you guys did freaking amazing today. And if it just would have gone like this from the very beginning, when Terry was the first brave one that came to you guys, because guess what? Even though you couldn't do anything about it, same system. Thank you. Hey, Chair, just for the record, uh, I never, I've never collected a dollar for being up here, so I'm not paid. I get nothing. I signed that over. I get nothing, and I, I wouldn't take it. But just to set the record straight on that, and also I believe uh, that Terry Knox's case has nothing to do with May with Banks or Lacoste. So that's a totally, it, it sounded like it's the same one. It's not. But anyways, thank you. I didn't know if anybody else wanted to address the board in regard. <clears throat> the election. Do we, I, Ms. Chair, I, I, under new business, will I have time to say something after this? Or do I, if I have new business, can I present it right now? You present new business right now. Okay. I would uh, like to recommend that somehow, and I don't know if county staff needs to be the lead, take the lead in this, or as a board or something, for us to maybe check with other counties throughout the state to see if they can uh, be of any value helping us to find a way to streamline this process. I understand that one of our neighboring counties is moving to 
have prob uh, probable cause and disciplinary in the same meeting because once probable cause has been found, the discipline guidelines are already there. And they have been looking towards, and the whole purpose of that is, <clears throat> if we can save any time, <clears throat> it was mentioned while ago about putting a, a dashboard out or something where you know contractors who's being under question can be seen, and, and there's pros and cons to that, obviously, because what if somebody's not guilty and they're just being investigated, then you know it can detrimentally hurt somebody. But at the same time, if there's several of them, it is a good flag that maybe something bad's going on. It can save that time. It can also save the time that some of these people are trying to find a way to get some recovery money, and there is a time limit there. And by the time you go to the DBPR, if you were here for that meeting Mr. Tim had, the DBPR, there's a backlog. It takes, after it's presented, after we do our stuff and sent the DBPR, <clears throat> it is as much as uh, 60 days or better before they even get to it. Then when they finally do something, they have to give 60 days opportunity for somebody to speak uh, back on it. So, if, you know, the time thing, is there anything we can do on our side? So I don't know if this is something that as a board we should take initiative or if it's the staff that should follow that, but surely we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's other counties that's, that's dealt with this and can find a way to expedite the process. As far as the streamline the process for the probable cause and the disciplinary hearing, currently that is part of the county ordinances, what is required. Um, I will look into it. I have looked into some of it, but I can continue to look in, in, uh, into that, the instruction and the request of the board will look into that. I will say Thank this, you. that we have, we have, as a board, have asked that uh, the Board of County Commissioners give us more teeth. And that's, uh, and, and that's correct, that pretty much everything that's set up right now, that's the way it is with the county ordinances, right? What, what this board is allowed to do is already set in place. Is that correct? Right. That um, what we're asking about, I believe, is the probable cause and the due process requirements. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is what the board has been following is a due process requirement that goes beyond just what the county commission would require. Is something that we would be yeah. required to do by law. But I can look at how other counties, um, what they've looked into and how they've handled that. But this board can't change. The county commission has to change it. No, Is that true. correct? That's On correct. the ordinance? That's true. That's true. Okay, that's, that's what live, I... We live by ordinance. That's what I told Channel 3. I'm just asking to see if there's a way to do that process so that we can present something to them. This I'm, is a very unfortunate situation, and I haven't been on the board. I'm the new kid still. I haven't been on that long, but I don't, from what I can tell, this doesn't come up really often in the magnitude that this is. It's well, very sad. I can tell you this, this is the worst case we've ever had since I've been on the board. And I, I definitely would not speak for any of you other guys on the board, but I can tell you that it pains horribly to hear people get up and talk like they did. Um, we're very much humans over here on this side, and it, it is horrible to hear that. I was a multi, multi, uh, what's that richest guy's name now? was Gates, whoever he is. I had his money, I'd give you $4.7 million, I promise you, to take care of this. This is it's horrible to hear this. And to think that there's any way we can help stop it quicker would be phenomenal to be able to do that. So, Mr. Lister, you also mentioned the possibility of a dashboard, and um, I just wanted to give you an update on what staff's doing in that avenue. We have been brainstorming on how to um, create a part of our website that is a searchable database of licensing, um, and to, it would give you the status of that license as well as any public records in regard to complaints or final orders or all of those items. Um, so we are actively working on that. We've had to get with our software provi um, permitting software uh, provider, MGO, because it's our data that we put into the system and then we have to pull it back out of the system for the dashboard. Um, we hope to have a good update on that in, in the coming weeks. 
King. We move into the election. Chair, Vice Chair. Entertain the nomination for Chair. I, I nominate Irwin. <laughs> and I decline. <laughs> So we can take this in a in a two part section. We can do chair first and then vice chair. Yeah. So. Well, then you make the nominee. Not to put you on the spot. Well, I I'd nominate uh, John Matthews to stay as uh, chair and Brian Bell to be vice chair. So. Second. I think they're doing a great job. So. Second. Third. I just want to clarify. I think what you were doing was a nomination for chairperson first, and okay. you wanted to vote on that, and well, then do a I, second. I nominate John Matthews to be chair. Okay. Second. All right. Um, who is vice chair right now? Okay. Then since he's the nominee, then you should take over the handling of the nominations for chairperson. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Matthews nominated for the chair. We've got a fir uh, first and a second. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, Mr. Matthews is the chair. Now, is the chair a considered nomination for vice chair? I nominate Brian Bell to be vice chair. Second. A motion at a nomination and a second. Any other nominations? And none. All those in favor of Brian Bell being vice chair, say aye. 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 Opposed? Being none. Mr. Bell, you're it. Again. Thank you, sir. Can I have another? <laughs> you, want to, you want to back out of it? Thank y'all very much. I will say this. I think this is the longest meeting this board has ever had. Before you adjourn, I wanted huh? to make the, um, you aware that our office through um, the building department has received notice of the bankruptcy filings. We do have the notices available for um, anyone who has a claim against uh, Mr. Banks that needs to be processed with the bankruptcy court. So I would recommend that they get in touch with Jennifer and she uh, or Melissa. They can get that out to them, what these notices are. The notices do recommend to protect your rights, consult an attorney, and then it, it explains there's some deadlines. So I just want to make sure you're aware that there is a notice that's out there regarding the bankruptcy and the recommendation within that notice is that you contact an attorney to make sure your rights are protected. And you can get copies of that notice from, our, from Jennifer or Melissa um, at the buildings department. Thank you. Any further business before the board? Being none, adjourned. Oh.